And we're live. What up, world? It's Radioactive Podcast. It's your host, Ace Boogie, and I have some great guests with us. Y'all go ahead and introduce yourselves. <laughs> All right, I'm Yoshi. All right. What up, though? I'm Mitch Mitchell, Mitchell Bell Boss. And um, today, we're going to have our manhood discussion today as well as, you know, just things that we talk about as fellas. Um, before all that, though, you guys, y'all need to uh, check in, like our uh, YouTube page, which is a radioactive YouTube page, as well as the Instagram, which is radioactive the same, we can radioactive podcast. Um, all right, guys, so how was y'all's day today? It was yeah. a lovely day. Lovely it was day. cool. It was cool. I'm crying. I'm crying. I'm crying. Nothing amazing happened today. It's a little today. hot out there, though. <laughs> say, what? Yeah. It's, it's been hot all week. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so question. We'll start off with you, Mr. Mitch. No doubt. What is manhood to you? Wow. If you was going to break down the definition. You said you're going to start it off with me? Yeah. What is like manhood? That? Man, yeah. You said, what is manhood to, to you? you? Man, how much time we got? Or how much time I got? Because that's heavy. Well, that's you can, we can sum it up the best ways. I mean, you know, I just think that it's been uh, portrayed as something that it's not for so long. It'll be hard. I think. First, we're going to have to break down the misconceptions of manhood first mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then get into the reality of what manhood truly is. Well, my opinion, okay. you know what I mean, of what manhood okay, is. Okay, well, but, then, you know, then go ahead with the philosophy, what people well, per se you know, say it course, is. You know, we think of manhood, you know, just machoism, you mm -hmm. know what I mean, just being real tough, uh, mm -hmm. you know, men don't cry, and you know, things of those natures. You know, you know, we all heard those type of things. Yeah, about men the basic. Not, you know, um, but... I mean, I guess we could go on and on about, you know, the misconceptions. Mm -hmm. I, I was hoping that everybody mm -hmm. else was going yeah. to get into what, Sorry, uh, man. the misconceptions of man. Celine um, was supposed to be here, but yeah. didn't make it, man. It's all hey, right. Celine, so. man. <laughs> it's all right, man. <laughs> well, what about you, Yoshi? What is, what is manhood to you? Um, just head of the household, go-getter, no sensitivity, no crying, mm -hmm. just direct, straight to the point. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I think that's what manhood was portrayed to be right 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 <laughs> so, so go go into mitch what it at least in your opinion yeah, what you feel opinion. It, it should actually be man you know um to my core you know i'm, I'm a believer i'm, I'm a uh, christian mm -hmm. you know um not the best christian by any means man mm -hmm. i'm like one of the worst for real <laughs> straight up but you know I, um, uh, my core values and my core beliefs come out of uh, are rooted in Christianity and the principles mm -hmm. that Christ taught. Mm -hmm. So um, for me, you know, a manhood is exactly who he was, you know what I mean? And how he moved, how he walked, how he talked, how he loved. So I guess I would say that, um, you know, manhood, you know, really is, is growth, it's is understanding, it's love, it's patience, it's kindness, it's gentleness. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, um, yeah, um, some of the things though, no, really, yeah, definitely being a provider. A protector. Mm -hmm. There's just something about manhood um, in regards to not necessarily just growing up from a child to a man, mm -hmm. but the essence of who a man is and what he's supposed to be. And I believe that a man is supposed to be the first representative of God to, you know, his children and the world. And, you know, what I mean, people mm -hmm. see him, you know, what I mean, they I feel like their uh, paradigm of who God is is directly connected to that man. You know what I mean? Just that first so example. Is it much like uh, unconditional love, unconditional, sure. pretty much unconditional everything sure. that you just named? Sure, sure, sure. No doubt. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. It gets so, deep, though. You know what I mean? We just, like, really tip of the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. And it's a conversation that we could go on and on. And it needs to be had, though, man, mm -hmm. because there's so many of our youth and young men and old men now, I would say even old men at this point, who are just so misled, man, and they just have the a false concept of what manhood is, and they're teaching the same concept mm -hmm. to the next ones down and the ones below them, mm -hmm. and we got a big mess right now. Okay, yeah. so with nowadays, because times have changed, times have changed, as, as you see with our guests, times have changed. So yeah. with that being said, masculinity is going to look different from, from each one of us, to be honest with you. So um, from, your, from your standpoint, Yoshi, Toxic masculinity. How, how is that? For first of all, how does that affect you? And what's your thoughts on it? <laughs> well, I, obviously, it's not affecting me mm -hmm. because, yeah, I am who I am, but I'm still respected as a man mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, I am one. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. for me, it doesn't affect me. Now, my community, people who are um, ignorant, 
um, people who are extremely sensitive mm -hmm. and, you know, hypercritical, it does affect other people. Um, and it definitely hurts their pride because mm -hmm. pride is part of pride. manhood and mm -hmm. that, that'll kill you, especially mm -hmm. in the, for the man aspect. But for me, it doesn't, it doesn't really affect me because I'm still going to handle my business as a man and everyone's going to respect me as such. I might look different, mm -hmm. but I'm still one. I mean, or else. You, know, that. you already know. <laughs> well, you already know. I, I, I asked you because, I mean, it might be some men. I mean, this man here is brave. You know what I'm saying? Because there's some men who, was, who wouldn't even consider, you know what I'm saying, sitting next to you even having this conversation. And that's why I say, that's why I bring up the toxicity in it because to me, that's definitely toxic. Like, because, what? and I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because mm -hmm. in our community, the black community, mm -hmm. this needs to be, this needs, people needs to see be this. done. Yes, indeed. Because, not every gay man is after the next straight man. Not mm -hmm. every straight man is out to bash the next gay man. Like hey. we well, all live in the true. same community and mm -hmm. we will all tear each other apart trying to battle each other for no mm -hmm. reason. Mm -hmm. But you never know who you're going to come across, mm -hmm. how you need them. Mm -hmm. Because like if, he, if Mitch had kids, I could have been their, their teacher at the daycare center. Or you, you want to bash me in the streets, but then wow. I, I take care of your kids. kids. Wow. That's or, you know. know what I'm saying? Like, it, 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 just, it just needs to be a respect. Like, no just like I give him the respect, he gives me mine. Mm -hmm. Like, and mm -hmm. we just met, you know what I'm saying? It's a mutual agreement that didn't have to be said. Right. But it That's also understood. needs to be seen because in our community, people are so quick to judge and so quick to assume, like, oh, this faggot ass nigga, we got to shoot him, we got to do this. Wow. Or the next gay man is like, oh, I could probably turn him out. Like, no, it's nothing even like wow. that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? keeps it real. <laughs> but, 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 but the fact that he came in here is that I see him as my brother mm -hmm. because at the end of the day in our so community much. we need to build that and Man. people need to understand like these relationships need to be had mm -hmm. so what do you say to the, to the men that sit there and say that uh, what manhood do you have you know what I mean? Well, for one, I served in the military. Mm -hmm. I've done more than they could ever imagine. Right. I stepped outside of the box to be a representative of my community because mm -hmm. my small sister was raised in that community. Like, I always took it upon myself to make a difference because at the end of the day, I'm a man and I'm an influencer. Mm. So all because I'm gay doesn't mean I can't help raise a child. Mm -hmm. I can't, you know, help my mom. I can't, I can't help the elderly people in the neighborhood because a lot of young men won't do that because all they know is drugs, white bitches, the streets. <laughs> like, I'm helping give back to my community. I'm in the beauty industry. I help make people feel good, look good. So I'm giving back. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people aren't stepping up to the plate to do that. But mm -hmm. a man is someone to step up to the plate to help yes. rebuild their community and lead by example. Mm, 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 mm. That was good. So, toxic masculinity to you. Give me what's your thoughts on it, and and matter of fact, things that we need to change on it. Toxic masculinity. masculinity. Yes. For instance, I, mean, I give to give another example on how we can't even stare at each other too long without even yeah, being the problem. Why would you staring at? You, you know what I'm saying? So these are these are things yeah. that need to be addressed yeah. and changed. You know what I mean? No doubt, man. Um, well, you know, I guess the first thing that would come to mind is just. Uh, the uh masculinity between you know men especially out here in these streets you know mm -hmm. it's funny to me man just because how i've progressed in life you know if you go to the club you know you kind of see some dudes with that little tough look on their face you know what i mean it's like they they really want everybody else to see that they tough that they mm -hmm. that they're man you know what i mean instead of really showing love to the next man and you know offering your hand how you doing brother i'm mitch you know that's why i make it a point to just make myself when i see the tough guy in the room nine mm -hmm. times out of ten i'm about to approach him I want to see why he's so tough. What's up, brother? How you doing, man? What's your name? I'm Mitch. What's happening? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm definitely, I, I, I mean, yeah, I think that that's toxic, though, because, you know, I, I've heard of people, you know, losing their lives behind that that kind of nonsense. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just a just a tough look. Ooh. And this dude may be having a, having a bad day. And you know what I mean? There goes, uh, you know, disaster, man. The sad part disaster. is it's normally used as a scare tactic. Exactly. You're not even really about that life for real. Yeah, but if I look tough, yeah, ain't nobody going to mess with you. But mm -hmm. nowadays, if you look tough, they're going to they gonna, they gonna test it. They're going right. to see how bad that's you really true. are. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people getting killed in the club over some female no, or because of how you look. That's like, come on tough. now. Like, that's that's not cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, toxic masculinity. We think we got to be tough. We think we got to be the toughest man in the room. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And we think, and you know what? The thing about it is a lot of the females they like the toughest they, they, man, man i think that's what that starts the confusion right you there because I mean? we gonna do what the women 
want. You know what I mean? Right, right. At the end of the day. Until so shit like hit they, the fan yeah, and then so, they call you on your shit yeah, and then you're you like, well, there you go. yeah. Now you stuck. A lot of the people who look like the toughest man in the room really be the softest man in the room. And now you stuck living a lifestyle that you're not built for. And then you get caught up in dumb shit. And then, yeah. A lot of dudes who look like they got the most money in the room be the brokest in the room. And you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're going to have to start teaching our young ladies better as well. You know, being a real example of what a a masculine man, you know what I mean, is supposed to be. You know what I mean? Not, we've been fooled so long, man. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that that it has to be said when we talk about, um, you know, manhood, uh, where the uh, the image and the idea of manhood is really being created these days. And you know what I mean? When you look at our youth, who are they really being raised by? What is what is their view of manhood and where does it come from? Understanding that the black father is virtually non-existent in the home these days, where are they really getting their values and their, you know, their, you know, just their uh, mentality as far as life is concerned? And, and, and you know, I mean, where is that coming from? So do you think that's where the where we lost it at because of the because the father's not being there. So with that being, think man, about it because rough. because what you now, look that's just one household mm-hmm. in the same neighborhood, mm-hmm. involuntary or, or voluntary. The village still raises the child. If yes. you're in a black neighborhood that's uh, that's missing a lot of fathers, they're left to turn to the streets, mm-hmm. and these broken homes are raising each other. Mm-hmm. So there's no values, there's no accountability, there's no respect. Mm-hmm. It's everybody spending for themselves. Mm -hmm. So literally, like, the impact of one fatherless household, it affects the entire community. So was your father in the household? My biological father wasn't. Wasn't My stepdad was. What about you, Mitch? Was your father in the household? Um, You know, my dad was definitely... a, a, a very f- a factor in my life, okay. but he wasn't in a household in regards to, I live in California, I'm born and raised in California, but I'm talking about like, and it's interesting when we talked about the, the, the paradigm between a man and his, a, a child and his father and God, my dad was definitely like, he lived here in Texas, mm-hmm. but he was definitely a phone call away. I mean, pops, what's up? Mm-hmm. What's up, son? I could talk to him about anything. If I needed anything, he ascended that day, the next day, right. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That kind of a dad, you know what I mean? Like, but I, you know, I come down here you know, twice a year. He come down there two, three times a year, but I feel like a child needs his father needs every his father. day, you know what I mean? Every day, mm-hmm. understanding, you know, um, some of the depravities that I had not having my father in the home, some of the questions that I wanted to ask him, but I had to ask some of my homies mm-hmm. are, again, you know, watching TV, looking up to certain uh, uh, hip hop artists and whatnot, you know what I mean? Like, okay, that's a, that's, who I'm going to shake myself after. That's who I'm going to be like, you know? Yep. But um, yeah, again, that's kind of like the same view that I had of God. You know, I believe that, you know, um, God was just this wonderful person, amazing God, and that uh, I could pray to him and ask him if I needed anything, but, you know, he was way off in heaven somewhere. You know what <laughs> I mean? Interesting, just the, the same uh, view that I had of my father, you know, amazing guy, wonderful guy, but he's way off in Texas, but I can call him if I need anything. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So with that mentality, I think that when when a man is 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 raising his child to be, you know, into manhood, you have to take these things into consideration. You know, it's a certain energy I feel like mm-hmm. a man needs to bring to to a young man. And and I think back in the days they used to have like rites of passages, you know what I mean? Right. When young men used to have to go through some things and, and earn some things and mm-hmm. learn some things to be considered a man. man you know, I mean, if we go way far back to Africa or, you know, different little programs that they had, like it was more, you know, relevant. But now, you know what I mean? Who's to say and, and, and what is it uh, that, that a man can measure himself? OK, now I'm a man. Like at what point have you reached manhood? Mm-hmm. So you know what I mean? I want to ask you something, Yoshi. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and not to say that gay is wrong, but do you think your life would have been a little bit differently if he was around? I'm gonna be honest with you. I think I'd probably be dead already. Really? Okay. What is that? What do you mean by that? Because the lifestyle that he lived and the environment that I was also in, if I was to live um, a straight lifestyle, honestly, it, for one, it'd be a lie. Mm-hmm. Two, um, it's not safe. So you Three, you last, that would he never, like he didn't have any good values. Mm. So I would have literally followed in his footsteps, money, drugs, prostitutes, and the West side of Chicago, enough said, like yeah. people get dropped every day on some random. Honestly, I feel like I would have died already. Mm. I, don't, I don't think I would have made it past my, 16, my age 16. <sighs> okay. Hey, so- I got to tap in. So do you feel like you would have chose the homosexual route had your father been there? <laughs> Honestly? Even if he'd have still been there, I still have to be who I'm going to be. Mm-hmm. I can't I can't fake the funk for nobody. I feel like it would have been harder for me because after having a couple conversations with him as an adult, 
his mentality out of that, like I said, he wouldn't have made it easy for me. Mm-hmm. Like I said, my transition with my mother, you know what I'm saying, and my family, you know, how it did, it was cool. But I feel like if he was still in the picture, it would have been a much different experience. It would have been one of those traumatic experiences. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he did, he honestly, he would have made a big impact and it it would have definitely, he wouldn't have pushed me anywhere, but to push me somewhere, we out in the streets. Yes. Because just like any broken household, kids turn to the streets. They're, They're the neighborhood friends and all that stuff. But my friends back in the day weren't really the best. You know so, what I'm saying? With us, we was talking about how, you know, pretty much pride becomes a big thing with us. We was talking about staring at each other and how that could be an issue. You, you stepped on my shoes, how mm-hmm. that could be an issue. Um, when is there a time that we can be vulnerable as men? Because as men, we think that we can only be vulnerable with our children and with our spouses. And I feel as men, we should be able to be more vulnerable. Even with our friends, we should be able to be vulnerable. But we're not, you know what I'm saying? Because we're afraid of how maybe our friends will judge us. But yeah. um, what, when, when do y'all think is a, we could be vulnerable as men? That's a tough one for me, man. Like, I don't know, man. I'm, I want to be more vulnerable, but I ain't really that. But what's, what's causing you to not be? Is, it society, is, is that society thing of you got to be tough? It may be. It may be that. It may be. Pride, you know what I mean? I'm just, it may be just, uh, you know, we're creatures of habit, you know what I mean? So my entire life, I've never been openly vulnerable, you know what I mean? I, I really adopted that uh, a man ain't supposed to cry type mm-hmm. of thing, you know what I mean? But I ain't gonna lie, boy, when I get in my room and mm-hmm. just, I'm by myself and I'm, Lord, I'm sorry. But where'd you, you know, get that from? That's what I'm saying. Man. Like, where'd that come from for you? Like, did your dad teach that to you? I mean, or was it was it that you never seen your dad cry? So you were like, no, I can't cry. Yeah, I never seen that man cry, man. That man was a soldier. So man. silently talked to you. What was that? Silently talked to you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely that. But just you know, growing up in the streets of California, Pasadena, California, just rough, man. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like with, that's all the people who cry got prayed on. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? They right. Got beat so that, up. You that's know the best I mean? thing. So you kind of yeah, had to no put doubt. on that persona. I'm never crying. That right. Because you would get picked on. Oh, you yeah, would get, no you get destroyed. You finna mm-hmm. be made fun of for the next two years for sure. <laughs> so I wonder what those type of things that is yeah. that what creates toxic masculinity because Possibly. you can't you can't even be you know what I'm saying vulnerable because like I said the neighborhood kids might pick on you or you might be considered weak they don't think you soft they don't soft, try to take yeah. advantage but my thing is like the men in your community y'all need to be vulnerable with each other because if y'all can't help build each other up mm-hmm. you're gonna tear each other apart so how was you able to break that wall per se do you, do you first off let me not assume that you're vulnerable. Uh, well, no, because don't get it twisted. All because I carry what I mean is not heavy. Mm-hmm. Like, I do have my, my weak moments because I have been that strong friend for everyone, my straight friends and my gay friends. But, like, I have my moments. I We carry a lot. Like, the strong individuals carry a lot because mm-hmm. you're always expected to be on your A game every single time. But at some point, you you get ready to break. Like, I just lost my grandmother the past year. I almost died. Like, I went through a lot of traumatic stuff. And the fact that I had to overcome that literally by myself, that takes a toll. Mm -hmm. Because you're always there for everybody else, but who's going to be there for you? Because the fact that you want to open up to other people, it's like, oh, well, you're soft. You're growing weak. Yes, you need to be vulnerable. You need to open up because you need to get that out. Because black mental health, it's wow. a big problem. Is that Huge. why it's important? Is that what? why us being more vulnerable Cause is important because of mental health? Because Mitch seems like he's really, really well put together, well mm-hmm. respected. Mm-hmm. But how much more can he take? Mm-hmm. That's heavy. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, I mean, you just, just you real. just touched something heavy, though, man. Black mental health is like something, one of the most overlooked things in the black community. You know, when our when there's issues there, you know what I mean? Our people are so quick to try to dust that under exactly. the rug. Dust it under the rug. Like, nah, nah, man, he ain't got no problem. You know what I mean? No, mm-hmm. this kid might need some help, though, for real. Like, mental health is something. And it's crazy, though, man. My daughter had a nervous breakdown at the age of 18. Mm-hmm. You know, unbelievable. And, I, I mean, I really dove into mental health like full-fledged i had the uh, first-hand experiences man of just how corrupt the industry is in itself you know what i mean it's definitely based on money you know mm-hmm. what i mean but uh yeah it's just it's just a real thing and it's something that we need to really consider and address with our kids like all the time man <laughs> hey it's heavy mental health man what up what up my fact you can go ahead and jump in on this discussion we got Aubrey in the building. No. Oh, okay. Well, come 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 say hello on the camera. 
He could jump in on his manhood, <laughs> on his manhood conversation. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> yeah. Good, how you doing? Um, okay. So that being said, in media, you know, we were we were always portrayed in a certain way. Like I used to watch How to Be a Player, Players Club, um, all these type of booty call. You know what I'm saying? Mm. How did these movies affect y'all as men growing up? Because me, as for me, it gave me, Man. it really gave me a player personality. I Man. thought that was the way I got to have as many women as I can. Like growing up, you know what I'm saying? Middle school, high school, I thought that was how it had to be because of movies like How to Be a Player. And, and just, I wanted that life. You know what I'm saying? So how did how did these movies uh, influence y'all? Go ahead, go, go ahead. Well, sure. honestly, first I thought all the shit was funny. Yeah. But I'm not easily influenced because, mm -hmm. like I said, my mom definitely had built me off some great values. Mm -hmm. So I was able to interpret like what was for me, what wasn't for me, and all that good stuff. But um, my friends, though, uh, it definitely made an impact on them. <laughs> Because that's the lifestyle they wanted to live. That's the lifestyle they felt like they had to be in. They had to get all the hoes. They had to get all the nicest cars. But they also struggled the worst trying to live a life that really wasn't for them. When you say that, what do you mean? Like, like was that under, undercover homosexual? Or what do you mean? No, not even, not even that. But just saying, like, niggas robbing niggas to get the cars, get yeah. the bitches, get the drugs. Like, really trying to live, like, that player lifestyle. But wasn't ready for the consequences of that they lifestyle. Wasn't that. ready for the responsibilities sure of that, that lifestyle. They did not show that part. On exactly. Movies. Yeah. So I mean, how did that affect you, Mitch? Um, these type of movies, <clears throat> man. All of that, I've been affected, man. I've been programmed, man. Right. And, and our kids are still being programmed. Now we talked about it a little bit earlier. You know, the hip hop industry. You know, just television programming. What they what they choose to put out there for us. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like when we see that. We desire that. We want that. We're programmed into thinking that that's what it is, you know, especially if there's not a male in the home saying, son, no, that's not it. No, right. son, they're acting right now, son. Mm -hmm. No, nah, no, nah, these, these dudes who, this, who who rapping and telling you about, you know, shoot them up, bang, bang, and this, that, and the other. No, son, they're acting, too. Mm -hmm. It's just a different form of acting. Like when a male, you know, I think that we got to take responsibility first mm -hmm. as the parent. And that's what it is, though, you know, because mom is at work. And she needs something to keep you busy. So we in front of that TV, you know, really learning our values and principles yeah. and things of that nature, you know? Like, even to this day, man, our kids are being controlled by the media, man. Right, yeah. Social yeah. media. Yeah, it's program. They know what it is, man. Television programming. Well, man. I want to ask you this, because even our fathers, because you, our fathers even encouraged to play this. I'm oh, sorry. No, no. And you know it. You man, know what I'm saying? Like, I got 22 brothers and sisters. Man. So, Come on, man. 22 of us, man. My dad was that dude, man. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, I definitely idolized that. I definitely said to myself, man, I want to be just like him. So man. Do you, would you would you consider yourself when growing up as wanting to be a player or being player because of these things? Yeah, no doubt, man. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm not a day player. I don't know, man. I, I thought I was a player. <laughs> it's rough, man. But this day and age, man, like that we live in, it's just it's strange, man. Just like you know, just the moral fabric of this world, man. Like everybody's players, man. It's it's, it's the hardest thing. It used to be hard to be a player. You know, you got a stick move. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. it's hard to be faithful. Mm -hmm. Cause I mean, like even now, man, it'd be like so many temptations everywhere. Everywhere, man. I'd be, hey, stop. I'm, I know your husband, ma'am. What is you doing? Mm -hmm. Like, well, he doing his thing, so I'm a, nah, not with me. God bless you. <laughs> Stay up out of my inbox before I tell on you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, For real. Miss Ruff out is, here. Is that, is, that, is, that, is that feminine to, if, you, if you did tell? If I did tell, yeah. is that feminine? Mm -hmm. Why well, really? Not tell. No. I ain't feminine. telling. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm because I, 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 I guess nothing as men. That is not though, some real talk, like, I ain't telling, man. Okay. I mean, like, what I look like telling on, on, on your wife and then. Y'all still gonna be together anyway. Yeah. Now I'm looking like the bad guy. Nah, you you know what I mean? I ain't tell it. What do you think about that statement? You know I mean? But <laughs> honestly, if it's real, it's gonna catch up to it regardless of whether he said something or not. Mm -hmm. Real talk. Okay. It's always gonna come back. Karma's real. Like it's gonna I come back hope, around. I just hope uh, you know, a lot of these brothers out there know, man. Like, you know, y'all check y'all girl inbox, y'all gonna see how solid I really been. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that no. being said, I'm gonna ask y'all a question. Because Wendy Williams, Wendy Williams had made a statement. She said that um fellas. If you cheat on your girl and you get away with it, don't don't come confessing it later. Just keep it where it's at because if you let her know, you're just gonna make things worse. And that because she don't know what she don't know ain't hurting her. Wow. So with that being said, with that being said, do y'all think okay if y'all's wives or or men's or however y'all significant others did that right? They cheated on you. Man. 
and there was no way of you finding out. Say that person, my fact, that person they cheated on you with yes. died. They died. Ah. So there's no way for you to find out, right? No way. Do y'all want the spouse to keep it to themselves? I tell you. I'm going to say this on top of that because, mind you, you and that person are happy. You know what I'm saying? So do you want her, to, do you want her or him to ruin your happiness? You weren't going to find out anyway. Would you rather them tell you or keep it a secret? Because <laughs> you wasn't listen, you wasn't gonna find out. That's rough. <laughs> Come on, you want to ruin your happiness uh, or not? Let's keep it real, because we know we do not. That's the worst thing to have to have to start over with when you're with someone for so long. You know what I mean? Choose happiness over history. For okay. One. Okay, but you don't know. But so your happiness ain't. But if ain't I don't know, it. but if I don't know, then yeah, I mean, why would I be upset if I don't know? So you want no, to keep it? So what keep you want to know? Though. Yes, what you want to know? No, no, keep it. Keep, keep it. Yourself. Okay, I'm with you. Yo, I'm, I'm, I'm with too you. crazy okay, for that. I I you want to know? <laughs> I can't. I can't because I can't once I find out, everything else is null and void. Like for me, yes. like once I'm mad, that we already had a conversation. That's it. That's hot. That's, that's hot. it. You can die tomorrow. I won't care. Like, why do you want to know, Mitch? Yeah. Why, man, do you listen, ruin, listen, why do you want to ruin your happiness? Well, here's the thing, man. And the reason why I say this is because this, like, if my girl cheated for mm -hmm. whatever reason, then there is a root cause for that action, though. There's something maybe that I wasn't doing or something in her. There's a reason why it happened. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and the thing, I'm, I'm just saying this okay. to say that if it happened before, and that situation wasn't necessarily addressed or handled properly, or okay. it wasn't really, um, you know, mm -hmm. hit at its core, then it's very likely that it's going to happen again, especially when we do things and we don't get caught. Mm -hmm. That just really makes it more likely mm -hmm. to happen again. And, and, and lastly, I'll say this, though, man, like um, just looking up at it from the other uh, perspective, if I was the one that cheated, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. there's no chance that mm -hmm. she would find out. You take it to the grave or what? Oh, man, yeah, you take it to the bank. Don't lie. You take it to the Look bank. at it, because look how hard it would be already on your oh, mind. Yes. Man, it's rough, yes. man. But, um, right now, I know the scenario is that if there's no way they could possibly find out. But for real, man, I've been in real life situations where, you know, it seemed like, you know, my little dirt was going to be swept, swept under the rug. So I'm like moving forward in my situation. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to make this happen. We're going to be together. And then, and then here it comes. The blue right. The rug. Rough, man. And, and, and when it was all said and done, you look at it and say, damn, I wish it would have been so much better if I just can't do this. For real. Well, I'm I do want to I do wanna address what you sat there and said about, you know, if she, if she cheated or whatever, it was a reason. I want to challenge that because as men, we cheat for no goddamn reason. Come on, yeah, now, they not real. Okay, they different than okay. us. Okay, I'm with you. But I'm just saying, like, but as men, we, I mean, well, we can't sit there and say that women wouldn't treat cheat for no reason as well. Like we ain't different. They cheat that much. They cheat emotionally. They okay, yeah. they cheat emotionally. Men, I'm saying is, is men very possible. cheat just from the from the lust, the physical attraction. Women do it for emotional reasons. All of them. But I think it's more than first just of the all. <laughs> <laughs> You're Look, right. I, I, You're I, I, right. Saying, but still, some of them think like us, so they they just made cheat. Just they were just put in that situation and they cheated. They had no real reason. They were happy. But there's also a name for those type of women too. What, are, what, are they, what is that? Some hoes. So, <laughs> I, I, I don't believe in that term, hoes. Wow. Nah, okay. but men, look, men cheat too, though. Like, for real, you know, we've, been, we've given this credit to men and, and, and the physical aspect of things, but the truth is, most men are broken. Mm -hmm. They're broken, you know, internally. Yeah, because of the movies like really The Players understand. Club yeah, and, and things like that. They're broken. I, I was broken for a very long time and still, God is still putting these pieces back together, you know, within myself, man. But we're broken and we don't understand, you know, commitment and fidelity and these different mm -hmm. principles that we need to know because that is really a part of manhood. A man is faithful. A man is faithful. I believe that. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because that's a part of you. That's a part of a man being real. How you going to be, you know, a man and you real? But you over here lying and you being conniving and you're right. sneaky, you know what I'm saying? That mm -hmm. they just don't really go a match hand up. In hand. So, in yeah, other words, you know your integrity is not matching up with There you, you go. Integrity. That means you know you're doing the right thing when, when ain't nobody ain't nobody no, watching. Ain't nobody watching. Yeah, that little yeah. word integrity. That's heavy. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. heavy. Yeah. So I think a man is faithful. But if he ain't faithful, mm -hmm. then he haven't really he hasn't really arrived yet. Mm -hmm. So he's not mature if he if he's cheated, is what you're saying? Yeah, I think so. I, but we I just said men will cheat for no reason, though. I mean, that's a level of immaturity. I don't feel like right. a real mature man. Right. Okay. Okay. Y'all right, right, right. say it's a level of immaturity, but think about this. Okay. My family, let me ask this question on top of that. Do y'all believe that humans are made for one person? 
Do y'all honestly believe question. that? Because I honestly question. don't. I think there's no way in hell we were meant for one person. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually yeah. talked to my wife about this before I even had this good discussion, <laughs> so I don't want to hear it. I, I've heard so. that argument a lot, man, and um, I just, I don't know, man. I think it's possible. But I also do believe that some people on earth do beat all odds. So I feel like it's possible. It's possible, but uh, come on, think about that, man. Because no, that's no, right. no, nothing in the, in the world sticks with one. That's not true. But my thing is, but well, my maybe thing very is, few. No, very, 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 very. There's quite a what, few dolphins? animals that what are you talking about? Uh, appear no. up for life. Different birds, man. Different, uh, different mammals. Very species, rare, man. No, no, As you see, dogs, few. whatever, fish, Wolves. they do not, they do Wolves. not stick with the same. No, wolves, Thank you. wolves is true. I'm just saying, because no, no, no. if the alpha and the beta yeah, female they die, yeah, the, breeding pa- the next, breeding the next one steps yeah, up. But the thing about that, you know, because the thing about that is up. whoever's the toughest is going to get that female. True that. But you know what I'm saying? Then, let then, another alpha male come and take that one out. Now that female's with him. I'm just saying. They no, 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 for life, though. They're paired for life. Until that next masculine wolf comes and takes that one out. Now she's with him. So, so is that really? If somebody come in your house and kill nah, you, they gonna marry your wife. She gonna. But that's how it is in the animal kingdom. Uh uh-uh. No. I'm so just, all I'm getting at that. Comes, I'm still saying that it's. I don't see how we are meant just for one person. Nothing is. So how is it that we we want to fit? Is it because we're smarter that we say, oh, we should just be with one person? Uh-huh. I think that's bull, especially with as much people as on this earth to believe that we are only meant for one person. So then, why is marriage? And then, pushed? and then, and then ask, ask this. How come we're able to love multiple people in love at that? Is that possible? The heck yeah, it's possible to be in love with two or more people. Yes. Oh, I don't believe that. Come on now. Y'all don't believe that? I don't believe that. You can love people all day, but to be in love, but to be in love with multiple people at the same time. To be in love. So he's saying that humans are the few. No, but I feel, he's saying humans are the few that species that have an emotional. And I, so I, do dogs. So do dogs. You just, I leave my dog in the room and he sits there and whines. I, <laughs> no, that's emotion. Care. That's emotion. I, I, I do not believe I, I, you can I, be. Because human beings have emotion. Mm-hmm. Oh, you might have to come closer, man, because folks can't hear you, man. You said, well, you can take one of them puppies, All right. So the reason it is, is because dog, well, this is what I believe, is because um, animals, just to answer your question, um, they, don't, they don't have the emotion gene. Humans have an emotion gene. So if I'm connected, like you're my best friend. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? I'm emotionally, like, I don't know, you know, but I'm emotionally tied to you. You get what I'm saying? So let's say... Me and you kicking it, um, and this person gets hit by a car, and then you get hit by a car. I'm probably not going to, I'm going to care, but I'm emotionally tied to you. So I'm going to be like, oh, shit, I'm sad. This. Right? You get what I'm saying? So that's just what I did. Like, animals don't have an emotion gene. Like, you don't see a lion with an emotion gene. Like, in humans, we know, we, we know how to manipulate the world around us. You know, so we know how to build a house. We know how to make fire. We know how to, you know. Go to, like drive a car, make computers. And shit. AC so not going for like, it. You don't believe that, that's that. just what I think. I just think. No, I mean, I didn't see. When you say, well, I didn't see some dogs crying only before. On, <laughs> only on whining. Um, Sick. Why are humans just become um, attached to one? And it's not all humans, but morally, in the in the human mind, you get what I'm saying. Oh, if you with more than two women, it's polygamy or whatever the fuck you want to call it, right? But I think it's just because we have an emotional gene. You get what I'm saying? A dog doesn't have like. You ever seen a dog in the middle of the street and another dog just walk right by? If you've seen another human being in the street just laying there getting ran over by a car, car, yeah, car, 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 you be like, what that. the fuck? Like, you get what I'm saying? Because we have an emotion. So we have more emotions than that animal. Which, just, I guess if you want to call it that, okay. it's just a, a monkey doesn't really, an animal doesn't have emotion for a fucking dolphin. If it sees a dolphin die, but if you see a white, black, green, orange, yellow man die, you probably have some sort of, you know, oh shit, because you have an emotion. Just, <laughs> that's what I think. <clears throat> I think it's because you just have emotions. So my wife just asked me, "How do you struggle?" <laughs> look, look, she just asked me, "So how do you how do you deal with the inner struggles?" I guess of because my views of. Ooh. Yeah, that's what she asked me. Oh shit, that's London. That's London. Check it out. I just keep trying to convince you. That's all. That's all I can do. Just try to convince you. <laughs> See if it works. If it don't work, it's then work out. Uh, I, just, I just gotta keep trying to convince you. <laughs> um. Okay. So, as men. As, I mean, because women, women grow up dreaming about marriage. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I want to be married. But as men, we do not 
at all. You know what I'm saying? Until the time comes that we do. And not just like this month we decided, oh, I want to get married. You know what I'm saying? And then we ask that month. You know what I mean? That's exactly how it goes. From young, a young boy to 30 years old, we never thought about it. But when we turned 31, we thought about it. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, do you think that it's our, our ideas to get married? Or is it the influence of her and society? Because we don't even think about this. The title of marriage doesn't even matter to us. I feel like it's society, honestly. Is, so you, what do you think, society yeah, somewhat, or? Somewhat. Um, I'm not really, yeah, the, the um, whole government contracts and all of that, man. I'm kind of like not really with all of that. Um, but I understand why it's more relevant and whatnot, you know what I mean? But uh, I think that the, the entire union of a marriage, man, that came out the Bible, though. You know what I'm saying? It's, mm -hmm. it's more of a spiritual thing. It's more of a, a commitment to God first. God, this is the woman I'm going to be with. You know what I mean? I'm going to choose to be with her. And then a commitment to her, you know, the fidelity, the honesty, and, and so on and so forth. You know what I mean? But, uh, you know, the government always want to put their they hand in something. Yes, you know indeed. what I mean? And it's interestingly enough, with that whole contract, the contractual thing, the marriage thing, like, I don't know. It's rough, man. Like brothers, brothers be coming out on the losing end of that. Mm -hmm. I want half of everything. I be feeling, that's what? What I'm feeling like, why do we, why do we even need a marriage license and all? I just feel like the government just trying to get in, get some funds. You know what, I mean? you know what I'm saying? Rough, man. Okay, but do you? So do you? Did you grow up wanting to get married, Elshie? No. No. So then he sit down. He that's just what was kind of like. Not forced on me, but it was definitely preached. In, a lot. in the homosexual community, do you think the men grow up? Oh, I, I, I want to marry my husband. No, no. So that's men. That's men on both spectrums. No. You know what I'm like, <laughs> across the board, men don't think about marriage. That's not so something. Where does I mean, it come from? We sit there and be like, oh, well, we want to be married. I think it's definitely more, you know, of a, of a feminine thing. You know what I'm saying? But like, you know, I think that's that desire for the woman to say, "He's mine." You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He's property. Mine. This is mine. I belong. And, and then, you know, I think it gives them, you know, one of the things that women really need is security. You know what I mean? That's like a major thing. Mm -hmm. They want to they want to feel safe. They want to feel secure. Financial security, emotional security. Now, when you done put a ring on it and you done did the whole ceremony mm -hmm. and service and all of that, she feels, okay, he does love me. He does. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So it's proving to her the, the final, I think so. I love you. So yeah. it's all about proving. It's so we're trying to get that. We're trying to get a more of a more reason to get the P-U-S-S-Y pretty much at the end of the day. That's what it sounds like. We're doing all it takes to get it. Oh, just the show will give it to me every night. Be established before, yeah. Be established. No, that's not right. We should be able to do that. Um, okay. So you was you was saying, you was talking about how you, you, I mean, you obviously feel the same way about the government always trying to get in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Out. So, I mean, what about, well, what about what more into? Because the fact you gotta, the fact that you gotta even pay to <laughs> to get Mary, you to get married, divorce, like, lawyers, attorney mm -hmm. fees. What is that? You mediation know I mean? fee, all of that, man. They say you only the money that needs the most. Oh yeah, the most no, money. Yeah. No doubt. Come on, man. It's, it's 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 part of the system, man. Don't have me to get in on systems, man. Not that's gonna be. Oh, man. Man. I can't stand systems. Yeah, I mean, we even, talk to even the system that. that I'm in, man. You know what I mean? I'm talking about what I'm talking about is the penal system. The criminal injustice system, the legal system, the, the bail bond system, it's mm -hmm. a system. And, mm -hmm. and all of these systems that I've named, and believe me, I can keep going, are, are systems that were designed at their core to oppress uh, people in poverty, people of color. You know what I mean? Like these are systems and, and they're terrible, man. And they were designed against us. I'm in the bail bond industry and I hate the bail bond industry. You mm -hmm. get what I'm saying? How does the bail bond industry work? I mean, it's interesting though. But again, though, man, I, I'm I'm fortunate enough to be somebody who's in the system. You know, I'm not of the system. You know what I mean? But I'm in the system right now. You know what I mean? So I'm really doing my part to help help our people out. You feel me? Bail bonds is is my platform. But but well, getting people out of jail is my platform. But keeping them out is my passion. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 real, man. Like my people love giving back to this community which is crazy though man because we we'll give back we'll do what we can and i ain't never like made money off of bell bonds in regards to, i've never lived off of bell bonds money all of the money that we make in the bell bonds go right into our nonprofit organization to help the community but it's crazy man like i i, I go to the gym and see one of my partners or something and he'd be like oh man mitch i should have called you man i went to a a such a bell bonds i went to this but what you mean is that's crazy what, have they done anything for y'all, y'all community to give back? You know what I mean? You know what? Probably because 
crazy. You know, sound like a jailbird. It's probably because when you go to the magistrate, hey. the number just right there. So they probably call the first one that they yeah. see. You feel me? Triple A, the first one, bro. Real That's talk. <laughs> Real talk. Thank you, brother. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. Yeah, the system though, man, it's rough. I mean, all of these systems, it's, it's, it's based on money, man, and keeping the, keeping us down, man, keeping people that are down down further. Okay, so I have a theory, right? Sure. I believe that the woman makes the man feel like a man, right? So, yeah. you know, I have my friends, and they be like, "Yo, I, I run my relationship, right?" Yeah. And I, I look at them and I say, and I say to them, look, I, I say to my friends, I say, no, that woman allows you to think. So it's like, it's like when the, the y'all remember on, 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 was it Hancock where the wife, she could have opened that jar. She was super strong. She could yeah. open a jar, but she gave the jar yeah. to her man yeah. and let him open the jar make him feel like he was a man. You know what right. I mean? Right. I believe that's what women do for us. No they, they, it's like they stroke they your stroke ego, stroke the ego. Yeah. To make us feel, and, and then we sit there and beat our chest. Well, I'm, you know, I run this. No, 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 but you don't run anything because she's allowing you. So, but then there's men that say, "I'm a man regardless, whether I had her or not." You know what I'm saying? So, what are y'all thoughts on that? Does she make does she make him a man, or is he the man already? Because I think she she adds that spice of, of you confidence. Know, you said that. You Additional, said, yes, of confidence. You said it right there. Dig this, man. Um, you know, again, you know, my core. My values to the core go back to the Bible, right? So dig this, man. Um, in the Bible, after God, you know, had made all these different things, he, he he said, let there be light. And he saw that the light was good. And he said, let there be this. And he saw that that was good. He did all of these great things, man. And, and then it turns out the first time after he made man, right? Mm -hmm. After he made man was the first time that he said, it is not good, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. He made man. And, and when he saw that there was no other creatures compatible with this man, after he made the man, he said, it is not good that man should be alone. Let me make him a helper. So he made the woman for the man. He took her from him and used that to make her for him. So it, that's foolishness to me when I hear, uh, you know, this 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 feminist movement, and, oh, we don't need no man, you don't need, yes you do. Mm -hmm. We need you, we need you, mm -hmm. and you need us, you know what I mean? She's, she's need, your man. balance. We need each other. The we right, other. The right woman is your balance. There you go. You boy, because the wrong woman. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, she's you your are. worst nightmare. Man. She throw off your pH. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but no, for real though, man. Yeah, no, a good woman, man. She definitely know how to make you feel like a man, man, on so many different levels, man. You right. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. a good woman can do that for you. So that's why I'm, that's why I'm wondering though. So, so the man who says he's running his relationship, is he really running his relationship, guys? I think he should be. Not running, I mean, but he's he not running. Be, but is but he, he's not doing it by is himself. He, is, he's, no, no, no. I understand that. But is she making him believe that, though? Is she making him believe that he's he's running it? I mean, it depends on who your woman is. Bro. Yeah, it depends yeah. On your woman. But it depends on what my girl. My girl makes me feel like a man. You feel me? It, it, you can call it stroking my ego. You can call right, it whatever. Right. You know what I'm saying? But it goes back and forth. It's just like if a woman asks you, "Yo, do I look fat in this?" <laughs> you get what I'm saying? I mean, just saying. Just set up. Hey, you, you feel what I'm saying? But we stroking. It, it's a back and forth thing. You think I'm gonna tell my woman? Hell no! You look fat as shit. No, that's mine. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna treat my car raggedy. Like yeah. you, I'm gonna wash my car. Like I may treat your car raggedy, but I'm gonna treat my car right. So I think that um, I think it's both. I, I think that you just have to have that common balance to where you know it's just like when you're talking to someone and you're like, you know what? I'm not gonna say that because it's probably gonna piss them off. The relationship, the same shit. It's like you know what? I know what to say because. Stimulus comes in different ways. Like, I don't have to be horny because you're beautiful. Shit, it could be your mind that made you get what I'm saying. So it comes in different ways. So it could just be like, you know what? I noticed that my man is very talkative. I'm not talkative, but I'm engaged in this conversation with him to stimulate his mind and mine. And maybe at some point down the line, that'll turn him on. And you know, it go deeper than than Kama Sutra. It go it go to like love language and shit like that. So I think we both need each other because you can't make a baby by yourself. You get what I'm saying? So I think that it, it's like I said, half and half. And then we make one. So I'll be I'll be um thinking about like again, like so in life, right? Growing up, young at young age. If if the first woman I came and approached in holiday shot me down, when I approached the next woman, I wouldn't be as confident. But because that first woman I went to and she Oh, okay, you cute too, and yada, yada, yada. Yeah. When I approach the next woman, I have confidence. When I approach the next woman, I have more confidence. In other words, without those women, I don't know if I'll be the confident man that I am today. Because you got to go through it. You got to go through it. But what I'm saying is, 
it took her though. It took these women to kind of mold me or not even, I don't want to say mold me, but it's because you didn't diss me. It's because you said that I was good at this. So it's, it's all these things because of what you did is what made me great. You got to go through the cold press to make a diamond. Yeah. Yeah. That's but right. what is that? that? That just shows that, goes, like I said, that goes into what I'm saying. How, man, are we really running it? Or is it really them? You know what I mean? Like, it, but it really does depend on the person because we're not all the same. So what do y'all think about gender roles? Meaning that the man should run the household. The man should be the boss. I think that, uh, you know, especially in this day and age, man, like, man, we, we, we've dropped the ball so much so that it's become the norm. You know what I mean? We've been slacking in so many areas, not being the man, not fulfilling uh, our obligations as a man, you know, um, with our children, with our wife, with our finances. We've dropped the ball so much, man. It's like, you know, we need to recover, though. Yeah, man, we need to be the man of our household. Man, we need to, you know, run our household. But, you know, I'm not saying run it with a iron, with a whip, you know what I mean? Run it in love and, you know what I mean, unity. I think the man uh, has a a spiritual authority that has been given to him from God to exercise over his family. But what if she don't believe that? in God? Huh? What? what if she don't believe in God? If she don't believe in God? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm not interested. Somebody, I mean, somebody else, if she don't believe in God, it's a wrap. Okay. We can't even talk. So, Yoshi, um, do you think that do you think that uh, it's impossible for a woman to to run a relationship? Like, do you think that's healthy? Like, do you think that's it can work? Yeah. yeah. So, you think a, a woman being the head of the household, you know, and the man being, you know, second, <laughs> you know, what I mean? so you think that works? In Jamaica, Why? the the women are mainly the head of the household. Yeah, they got to be. They got. But how does that work? In that's Jamaica, what I'm saying. Jamaican men are whores. I know this. That's my whole wow. family. Mm -hmm. wow. Like, no, I believe that. I, I know some. They're Jamaican naturally they hypersexual. Just, like, right. we're just. That's just how we are. So, what does that mean? If the women let it slide, that's why. I mean, I run it, so I'm gonna let you slide and, and be loose. No, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, but like women do well. The women that I know tend to run the household. They got to do everything because they're not going to allow their children to follow those footsteps. So they go the extra mile to impact their kids. Mm -hmm. Because that again goes from the fatherless households that are broken. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna raise a broken son because his daddy don't wanna be around. Like, mm -hmm. no, I'm still gonna try to, you know, raise him up and build him to be the outstanding man that I need him to be. Yeah. Yeah. That I know he can be. Mm -hmm. What do you think? You think a woman can can run the relationship? I think I think, no, I think, let me tell you, see, see, women are adaptive, though. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I think that they adapt and, and well, and that's kind of, you know, the design of a woman. But I think that can she run a household? Mm -hmm. eh, I, I don't know. Is Should she run the household? Absolutely not. Not in that not in that way, you know what I mean? But, I mean, I guess it depends on how you look at it. A woman is essential to the household. Mm -hmm. But should she be the head of the household over the I man? mean, she's already, if you not. think about this, right? If you ask most married men, they will say, my, my wife runs a household anyway. You know what most I'm saying? Married women, most married men will say, run the my, household. my wife say? runs, okay. Now, give me, okay. Give me a girl, small example. My girl runs the house. What does that she mean? My girl, you, my girl makes sure everything is my girl makes sure everything is situated because I'm a man. I'm not as tidy as her. Okay. So we, we got sons. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And I'm, I'm nurturing. But you know what I'm saying? When they hurt, yeah. they probably gonna go to their mama first because shit, she got titties and like you get what I'm saying? Like they're probably gonna go because okay. she got she give I give off testosterone in that sense. As far as who runs it, like who's ahead, if someone breaks in the house and they see me and my girl there, no matter where I'm at, they probably gonna kill me first. Like you know what I'm saying? Because I'm a man. So in that sense, yes, but who keeps the who keeps and I'm not I'm not biblical I'm not religious like I'm, I'm way far from that right but um, if you read I believe it's somewhere in the Bible I believe it was saying somewhere in there that like the woman keeps the house together or something like that I yeah I mean that's that's what I'm you know what that's what I'm trying so to get at I mean. right like, now she though keeps like the house no, because she's like the shoelace what do you mean by shoe? running running the household because I mean like in regards to the daily operation show I think there's no better yeah my girl all that. not like that's what she belongs doing dishes and this that no she never right. never like, like that <laughs> but nah I bust some stuff it's easy man yeah. she, especially if she cook baby let me get it's that home, uh, you know what I mean that's not a problem but I'm just saying like in regards to the daily operations of the home like yeah women are mostly more organized than men and, exactly. and just yeah like you said more tidy and things like that nah but in regards to running the home yeah, like running, you know what I'm saying I'm gonna make the decision I done did this this nah that's not it's not gonna be like that you know what I mean we gonna 
can talk, we gonna communicate. We'll make we sure we come to a common ground to what, what we want yeah, to do. Yeah, every, right? every, every, yeah. everything like that, you know what I mean? But, um, but yeah, my girl make sure, then, the house was messed up if it was just left up to me and my son. We just being there look like a pig sign. <laughs> what you think, I feel like it should be equal effort because every household is different. So mm-hmm. everybody has different responsibilities. Like in some household, the women are the best financially. Mm-hmm. So essentially, yeah, if the bills true. is paid, true. if the bills if the bills are paid and organized, the household is being ran. But if the man does construction and builds and builds the house, and he's smart and does everything financially, the house is ran. It just depends on the household and the people who are in it. But I also feel like there is never one head of the household. They both have to come together equally because without the other, it'll fall. It's like which one is more important is the transmission but i feel like it's but i feel like they all but they all are equal parts if you're in one common household you need each other yeah no doubt because if you're doing it all by yourself then who is the other why is the other person there then right so you supposed to pick up on what what the other person right so if you're doing everything and the other person is not serving their purpose then what are they really there for Mm -hmm. yeah yeah okay so i mean so we're saying that even beta males have their purpose because you got some men that are not strong. Mm-hmm. They need the woman for that to stroke their ego. They need it for their emotional support. They need it. They need that guidance. But does that because make him uh, look a certain type of way as a man? Every man is different. Mm-hmm. But you are what you say you are. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm anybody about to be out here? I'm like, oh, you a weak ass nigga, this and that. Like, you don't know what that person's been through because mm-hmm. mental health in our community is a big issue. So you don't know what they're going through, don't know why they're so broken. Instead of you worrying about what they are, figure out why they are the way they are. Like, what happened? How can you be an impact on this person's life? But I know a lot of men that are very soft-spoken, that are very sensitive, that don't know how to be that that dominant go-getter man because they've never been around that. I've known men who had generations of soft-ass men wow. that had strong, dominating women. <laughs> but I it, believe it. But though. it happens. I believe it. But it happens. Yeah. So, like, mm-hmm. you know, I, but, I don't know. And that's crazy for me because I feel like. You know, women nowadays, man, they're taking on a more masculine role, you know, in society, in mm-hmm. relationships. It's interesting because, you know, I have my own thoughts about that. That's a whole nother session, man, for real. But in the process, a lot of these men are being emasculated, though, man. I'm telling you, they're becoming more soft and becoming more, you know, sensitive. And, why? you know, wondering why certain things why? about them. Why? Because of the masculine role that they've allowed, you know, men, the woman to take in the household. You know what I mean? In the relationship. No, you going to do this. Damn. Okay, baby, what? Never. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you to, hey, you have to watch me talk. I'm never going to accept nothing like that. You know, it's going to be respect. I'm going to respect you too, but you damn sure going to respect me, though. You're not going to call me on my... Like, and, and that's the toxic relationships that, you know, we, and I put myself in, we, like, you know, do like it. Rah, rah, rah. You, know, you know what I mean? That but with that being said, can women be toxic too? In that yeah, same? Absolutely. Super toxic. Yeah. Vicious. So that, that talking crazy to the man and that's all considered toxic. Yeah, but when I think when the no, nah, I, I man, I ain't never put my hands on a woman in my life. I ain't never, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? I, that always, you know what I'm saying, kind of like in my mind, like you know, you in an argument with a female, and now the female now you she know that you could mm-hmm. one and she's finna roll over. Yeah, it is off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> For real. But it but it but it boggles me, you know, you in a conversation with a woman, like. Man, shut up. You shut up. Make me shut up. Man, do you know how easy that would be? <laughs> That'd be re- very easy. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't have to start respecting the roles around here, though. You know what I mean? But I, I, again, I do not advocate putting your hands on a woman. I have never put my hands on a woman in my life, not by accident. Like, none of that. I'm not going to do that. Like, not by impulse, but, and sometimes, boy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, you know what, wonder, like, what if I Shut did? up. What if I did do it? Oh, I'm not doing it. If you did do it, you're going to jail. And you're going to have to call <laughs> Mitchell Bell Bonds to get out. You know what I mean? Like, don't count it. Don't do it. All right, guys. Do y'all think a woman can raise a man? Absolutely. Absolutely? All right, I got to go to the studio. Ooh. All right, thank you. All right, G. Absolutely. I make sure y'all tell y'all friends y'all love them. <laughs> huh? No, no. No, but back to what I was saying. Can can a woman raise a man to the best of her ability? But I guarantee you, absent the father, that man is gonna be, he's gonna, so gonna, gonna be, be missing issues. If it's just, oh yeah, man. If it's just his mother, he's gonna have problems. So yes. why do you, why do you why do you feel Yoshi that that she can? Now, because I am a product mm-hmm. of a mother raising a man. Mm-hmm. 
Yes, my, my, my biological father wasn't there. My stepdad was there, but emotionally he wasn't. Mm-hmm. So with that being said, my mom was my everything. And like I said, and like earlier, voluntary and involuntarily, the village is still going to raise the child. Mm-hmm. So my mom, whether she liked it or not, technically did not raise me by herself because I still had to go out into the world. I had to go to school. I had friends. I had a lot of influences. So, but I do believe a woman can raise a child because there's a lot of women right now that are raising successful black men Mm -hmm. that are definitely, you know, making an impact in the world. So I feel like it is possible. It shouldn't be, but it's happening because a lot of the black men are not make or stepping up to the plate to make that change, to break that chain, to break the cycle. It's not happening, but I do believe a, a woman can raise a man. I, um, I, I agree with everything that you're saying, by the way, you know what I mean? Um, I think that there's a lot of, uh, functional dysfunctional people you know what i mean functioning dysfunctional people i think that there's a lot of people you know who have i mean and and again it really depends on what we define success you know what i mean successful black men there's some people out there that have made good decisions you know what i mean went to college good job Mm -hmm. and you know what i mean they've been raised you know by a single mother and then you know later on in life you know they uh end up, you know, needing some real counseling, you know yeah. what I mean? And, and those yeah. father wounds that they incur because they their father wasn't there have surfaced at this point. Now they're surfacing. Now they're realizing, like, you know, just different things that they were missing and they didn't have and the type mm-hmm. of person that they would have mm-hmm. been had mm-hmm. the father been present, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But um, I, I, I was, as you was talking, I was wondering a few things. So um, if, if, if you don't mind, I can ask you a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, when did your father leave? Mm. <laughs> your biological father birth <laughs> oh, yeah. um, well he left around like when I was like one wow. but but I will say that you know my my mom's side did not make it very um, very easy for him to stay okay but he also played a big part in why they felt the way they felt so strongly gotcha question so, yeah. mm-hmm. um when did your stepfather actually step in? I know you said he wasn't there for you emotionally. He wasn't the type of, like, maybe the father that's like, come on, son, we're going to go do this. Mm-hmm. But when did he come into the picture age-wise? Ooh, like um, when I was 20. Mm, that's when your stepfather came in? He's been there since I was, like, two. That was my question, though. So, so yeah, yeah, he's been, been there. there. Okay, he's yeah. been there. And I will always okay. love and respect him for that. But okay. I feel like when he made an impact was when I left for the military. When you left for the military, how old were you? 18. At what point in your life did you feel the difference? Did you feel like, you know what, I might be one experiment with homosexuality or whatever the case My is? My 21st birthday. So prior to that. Mm-hmm. No, because that's so if, if that's real, that's so honest, because I know a lot of people that are homosexual. Well, I've always felt like this since I was a mm-hmm. kid. And but this, see, my, that, and the other. I have. Okay. But my thing is, I'm not gravitating towards the trauma. So if I had issues like with my father, abandonment issues with men, this and that rape or molestation, I'm not going to gravitate towards and say, oh, I'm gay. I love this. See, that's interesting. I'm not going to go towards the trauma. Wow. I'm not programmed to do that. If wow. something affected me like that, I'm going to do the best for my sanity to stay away from it. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't affected because he wasn't because he was absent. He was physically there. But for me personally, emotionally, he wasn't because my sister, my little sister was a priority. And I don't want my family thinking like, oh, my God, like this. Yeah. Don't don't get it twisted. Like. Me and my sister are real close. We will always be close. But we were raised in the same household, but we have two different lifestyles. We were treated totally different. And why? 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 Well, that because that was his actual well, child. Violet. My sister, my sister is my dad's actual daughter. Right. I'm well, the, so I'm the stepchild. So you know it's it, very though. difficult for not only to raise a child, but for a black man to raise a child that's not biologically yours. Mm-hmm. So now you have to program yourself to have that parental instinct for another man's child. That's hard to do. That's hard to do. Mm-hmm. So now, okay, so you're, you're in my life, I have to love you. Like, that's hard to do. Yeah, Some I need to turn that switch on. That's yeah, hard. and I, like I said, like, I respect him for everything that he's done. Nobody's perfect. The fact that he still stuck around to try to you know, help me out 
I, I will give him that. I, I'm never going to sit here and bash him. We have our own issues that, of course, that me and him have discussed, we've talked about. And as an adult now, our relationship is cool. When I come back to Chicago, I see him, you know, we hang out, laugh, joke, talk, whatever. But like as a kid, it felt like I've always felt like it was I was I had a piece missing to see my sister in the same household, have her mom and dad. And then I have my mm. mom. Mm. Wow. But I see this man and I have to call him dad. That's heavy for me, mm-hmm. just listening that's to this hard, stuff. But it's hard to do. Yeah. Yeah. So I, but my mom, that's something that we struggled for a long time. Like, I can't just program myself, oh, that's my dad. That's my dad. But you didn't feel like it was your, your family, per se. But he didn't, at first, growing up, it felt, it was very awkward. Um, I love my cousins on his side. I love my aunts. Like they, but it was it was a little awkward, especially once I found out that I was the stepchild. Now I have their last name, so I'm family regardless. Mm-hmm. But just as a child to go through that, like, well, I'm not like everybody else. I mean, I have the last name, but I'm not blood related. So it's like, is that why I'm getting treated different? Is that why my gifts aren't as great as theirs? Is that why I don't get invited to family reunions? Like, it was hard. It was hard to deal with. So like being wow. a stepchild. Um, it was it was difficult, and that's something I honestly wasn't really gonna talk about. But because I honestly just see my dad as my dad. I have his last name. He's been around since day one. But it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of a lot of people need to hear that. When did you start calling him dad? And like, what made that happen? Was was it that someone told you to call him dad? Or when did you start calling him dad? Uh, in the and beginning, what made you? And my beginning. mom. Yeah. yeah. Was, was it the main thing or did you make the decision that you wanted to call him dad? No, I just I just had to because I didn't find out, which was tough, but I didn't find out until I was 12 that. But you felt it though already though. Yeah. You found out what it was you was feeling at 12. But yeah. prior to that, you like, wait a minute, something. Well, why is she getting all the love and attention? It kind of, you yeah. felt it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I understand that. Not saying it was cold hearted, right, you know right, what I'm saying? Right. But you know, like we did have our good times and yeah. our bad times. But I feel like that's with any so, child. But go ahead. I'm sorry, because I'm, I'm no, like, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, this is heavy. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Really, I really want to know because you said before that you didn't revert to the trauma, but so many times, man, trauma draws people right to things like that: homosexuality, mm-hmm. the depression, this, that, and the other. Yeah. Certain trauma. I mean, mm-hmm. there's so many. I, I've talked to so many homosexual. people people um and and it's a a variety of reasons why they chose that lifestyle Mm -hmm. a variety of reasons some um out completely out of their control and some completely in their control they just made a choice you know Mm -hmm. what i mean to go that direction but um the trauma seems to be a very interesting factor that draw them to that type of a lifestyle you said you were able to kind of like what resist that type of Trauma yeah, I honestly, I honestly didn't want to go into it until I was ready and I was well informed. I didn't want it to be a traumatic um, experience because that's something that could haunt you. And you can, like I, I was told with the last podcast, it's a downward spiral. If you're not ready for it, you'll get into a lifestyle that looks all fun and glamour and rainbows, <laughs> but it can be drugs, yeah, murder, yeah. like a lot of hate crimes. So like, if you're not prepared for it, don't do it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, but also that's a, an argument that me and Ty had because like he felt that it was a choice. I don't feel that way. Mm-hmm. My only choice was to tell you or not. Because mm-hmm. that's still something that I have to battle with. But, but his, his, his thing was it was a choice because of something happened. Because something happened to him. That kind mm-hmm. of, I don't want to say forced, so but. Can it be both? Just depending on. Can it be both? Like just depending on your. Experience? Yeah. Me personally, because I can only really speak from my experience, I feel like regardless of what happened to me, I was already going to come into this lifestyle. Okay. So, guys, um, as men in the role that we're supposed to be in, um, we're we're kind of programmed to we want to achieve better and better and better and better, even when it comes to anything. When sports, your father's probably telling you, you're going to be the best football player. You're going to be – we're always striving for better, better, even in jobs, right? When is it ever okay for us to, to be content or, or, you know what I mean, to be like, ah, you know what I'm saying? Like, when is, when is that time, when it's, especially when it comes to work? You know what I'm saying? Should, should, it, should you always strive to want to make more money in work and, and be, the, you know what I mean? Or should, can it come to a point where you're like, okay, I make this much money a month. This is it. Cool. <laughs> Family, this is what we're going to have. I want to relax now. I don't want to strive to be more now. You know what I mean? So. I can do it. Is that is that even is it even okay for us to be content, or is that not you're not a man because you're content, you know? 
because we're always striving for the best. I mean, you should always strive. I feel like you mm -hmm. don't have to be content unless you really want to. You should always want to strive to do better, challenge your mind, because sometimes mm -hmm. being content can also lead to depression. You're doing mm -hmm. the same thing over and over again for the rest of your days. Like, how much happiness can you expect to get from that? You're going to need to challenge yourself at some mm -hmm. point. But I feel like, man, I keep trying to become better and better and better. When do I relax my mind? Like, when do I get to relax? That's whenever you are ready. You can't, that's something you can't force onto yourself because that'll cause a mental trauma. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because these are decisions that you have to live with. Yeah. I think I'm like that myself, though, man. I'm, 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 I'm definitely always striving for more and better. And I'm like the worst on myself. I'm like the hardest on myself, especially uh, when I fail at something. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, you know, I beat myself up. But uh, no, man, I think that uh, every man, you know, has a measure of whatever it is in him. If that's that drive, if that's that motivation to do this and to go like, man, I'm never going to stop striving. I think that I think. But you have to I think that you have to embrace the beauty of striving for a thing, you know, and um, you have to posture yourself and position yourself differently, not from a, a place of anguish, mm -hmm. but a place of rest. You know what I mean? I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep getting it. I'm going to keep, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, it, it could be a beautiful journey. Like when you focusing on the journey as well, you know what I mean? Yeah. We're going to get to the destination eventually, mm -hmm. but don't miss the beauty of the journey. You know what I mean? Focus so much on the destination. You know, mm -hmm. I think we got to keep driving, stay motivated, keep being hungry. You know what I mean? Because, um, the better off we are, you know, for me anyways, though, that's what real success is, man. It's not about how much money. I don't chase money, man. Money chase me for real. Mm -hmm. You know, I make decisions on what to do. And I done made a lot of bad decisions, you know what I mean? But um, I think that, you know, eventually you just, I don't know, man. I kind of So like there's no that, rest. Though. It's out, man. It's something but, like but that. It, it's it's no rest from for a place us. to rest, though. From a place of, of rest. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I'm, I'm not that I'm content. But I'm gonna keep getting more because I want to do more for more people. You know, I want to I want to help somebody. Like that's that's rest for me. Like when I'm able to like we you know we do our food pantries. We was doing them on the first and fifteenth mm -hmm. of every month, man. Like when we were out there working and feeding people and helping the community, man, that was a place of rest for me. I wanted to do more, but yeah. it was like just such a freedom, an element of love and freedom that that we received, man, from doing that. It wasn't like stressful. It wasn't yeah. like it's like you your job I mean? made you feel good. It and when your job can make you feel good at that man. point, yeah, you don't feel stressed. You don't feel like you got to, yeah. okay. But you got to keep going though, man. You yeah. got to keep going, especially when you got that type of motivation for your family, mm -hmm. your kids, or whatever your it is. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, man, that's just a, it's, I can't. So what if, what if say your goal was the white, you know, the house with the white picket fence, right? Yeah. You get there. Yeah. But your woman's goal was something way bigger. The mansion. mansion. With the right. <laughs> now, are you less of a man now? Because in her eyes, you got there, you got you got to where you wanted to be. Yeah, she just strived a little bit for something a little bit more, and it doesn't make you less of a man because that why that house with the picket fence is damn good. You it's know what I'm nice. saying? But yeah. like, but you know, just your partner just wants more. May not be enough for her, man. Yeah, but yeah, being but a man is having the ability to compromise with your partner. Mm -hmm. If I she's agree. your partner, she needs to be your equal. Y'all need to talk about that. Agreed. And if she's unhappy about it, then y'all need to come to a medium to figure out how to make it better. So is this a responsibility to make sure she's happy about it? To make, you know what I'm saying? They say happy wife, it. happy life. They That's didn't. true, but it's your responsibility saying. to keep her informed. So she need, and if she knows you and she respects you as that man, then she needs to approach it with, well, since she wanted to get the white picket fence, what can we do to make it more comfortable for me as well? Maybe we, we don't have maybe, maybe right. Maybe we don't have that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's a communication thing as well. Like Agreed. I feel like, and it's also it's compromise. Okay, okay. Just to go, I, I want to go back a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I feel this way. Okay, listen to Charlemagne. I was listening to Charlemagne on the Breakfast Club, and he was saying that Charlemagne, the dude, Charlemagne, the guy, uh -huh. the dude, the dude. The yeah. dude. <laughs> he said you don't like you don't like him. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> He was talking to his father. And he's, he said he was mad at his father because his father was cheating on his mom's. And he's asked his father, like, yo, why was you cheating on mama? And his, and his father's response was, well, son, you only have one girlfriend? Like, <laughs> you don't understand. You're going to understand wow. when you get older, right? Ouch. So yeah. that gave him the, a certain mentality, right? He Absolutely. told you, you're going to understand when you get older. Yeah. But as he grew up, he, he as well, to the man he is today, he, he, he has a, a hate for his father because of that. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So... Do you think our fathers cheating on our mothers affects affects us as men? 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Everything, that, every, too, listen, yeah. man, everything that our father does to our mother affects us as a man. Ooh, but that's everything. scary. And I mean everything. Like how right he there. speaks to her, how Ooh. he loves her, how he talks to her, if he's there, how much time he spends to her. A man learns how to be a man from watching. by watching his father. A man learns how to treat a Ooh. woman by watching his father. The father is critical, man. He's critical. And when he's not there, we just guessing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And a lot of times we guessing wrong. We watch, we looking at the wrong uh father figure, if you mm-hmm. will, man. But yeah, absolutely critical. Critical. You know what I mean? Yeah, no doubt. Dang, man. Yeah, that that is crazy. Can you think of a time where I mean, I don't know if you said pops was around. Yeah. Can you think what? Can you think of a time where that influence you know, man, I see my mindset? dad. Yeah, man. I see my dad with so many women, man. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. again, I got 22 siblings, right? Mm-hmm. It's 10 moms. You know what I mean? And I know all of my siblings' mother well. I love them. Some of them I call mom because I have a really close relationship with them. All of them call my mom mom because my mom was kind of that mom that, you know, pops to ship them off to. You know what I mean? Like all of my siblings, whether they were her biological kids or not, at some point in time, they were raised by my mom. But, um, you know, um, I learned some good things, you know, in regards. I saw my, my dad always, by the time, you know, I got old enough to be cognizant of what's going on. Um, my mother and father were not together, but you know, dad, you know, they here come, they sit and have coffee together, you know, crack jokes together, laugh, ha ha, he he. It was definitely a lot of love and respect that I still was able to see. But in regards to knowing how to love this woman, man, how to talk to this woman, how to, you know what I mean, be a man. And nah, nah my father never taught me those things. What does that situation teach you about women watching your mother take all of that? So watching a woman take on all these things, what did that situation teach you as as young man? Me? What did it teach you about women? Got you seeing oh, things man, like that yeah, happen to My mother was, a, is, I'm saying it was, but is a strong woman, man. A very strong woman. A very loving woman. Compassionate woman. I mean, uh, women are strong, man. Women Ooh, are okay. amazing. You just, know? just touch on that. Yeah. Is that, could that be the reason why the man wants that woman who can run the household, per se? Like, could that be the reason? Because you've seen this woman being so strong. Yeah. So now that's what you're attracted to. So that All woman right. who's going to take control like that when, when she has to. Who wants that? You said, who wants that? I the man. Who- <laughs> <laughs> I mean, nah, I don't get it twisted, man. I, I definitely want a strong woman. You know, uh, I, I don't need a woman that's going to let me just run all over her mm-hmm. and do whatever I want to do. Right? Baby, I'll be back in a week. Where are you going? <laughs> I'm going to handle some business. You know what I mean? Like, I don't need that now, nah, you know, and I, I definitely need, you know, a strong woman, uh, 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 you know, an intelligent woman. I mm-hmm. love, you know, a woman that can, you know, really, just speak well, you know, you know, build herself up. But um, again, though, I don't need no masculine woman. Like, I'm gonna run this. Like, what? That's not what's going on. I was gonna um, piggyback on what Mitch said about, you know, the father figure is critical because another big issue, like with, you know, the father, you know, cheating on the wife and things like that. Um, there's another critical thing that happens in household and in family generations is family molestation. Wow. Mm. Wow. So families are real quick to out the little gay cousin or the gay uncle, but y'all yeah. keep the father molesting your little sister a it's secret. True. And it mm. trickles down the line. And it's then the true. next male comes along and sees it happening. And then they think wow. it's okay. And then they get the girlfriend. They want to molest their little niece and, or sister or something like that. That happens as well. Having a father figure is very critical, wow. especially when they're in the household. They have to be mentally intact because something like that happens. They don't know how to out that without snitching or feeling like, oh, I'm disloyal to my pops. Wow, mm-hmm. that's heavy. That, that goes heavy. to the role of the father being the protector, though. The father, you know what I mean? Yeah. He has to be in the house. He's the protector. He's supposed mm-hmm. to know what's going on in his household. So, mm-hmm. as fathers, as men. Wait, can, I say, father. Oh, can oh, I say something? Can I say something? Man, that was just so heavy, though. It's a lot of that crap going on, and we ain't speaking up on, on it. In the yeah. black community, mental health, we ain't speaking up on it. How, how would you say somebody should go about that, though? Let's just say somebody's yeah. going through that. How should we go about snitching on that uncle that daddy that right. whoever how do we go yeah like should we go to the families first or I, the police first i think the families first we should definitely go so to the families first. i mean family, I, but, but, but it depends on the severity of the situation if you come home and little three-year-old bobby is bleeding from the you know what i'm mm-hmm, saying mm-hmm. you need to go to the police immediately right. i don't care who it is right. whatever call me a snitch or whatever you know what i mean whatever if it's if, if it's that tri- type of treatment but if it's like you know Somebody come to you and they like this and that's been going on. Yeah, we might have to have a family powwow. 
Mm-hmm. Cause either we finna, you know what I'm saying? The intervention. Uh, something <laughs> finna go down. You know yeah. what I mean? But um, yeah, keeping it a secret, man, is what's we, which what is what we've typically yeah. done in the black community. You know what I mean? Um, we got to do better. We got to do better for real. Yeah. I mean, we need a a, a black crisis hotline that we do. Know, yeah. Hey, do. look. It, you ain't heard this from me. Yeah. There's something going on. Uncle Ray Ray. Uncle Junebug be sneaking in little Bobby room. Right, whatever the case right, is. But it, yeah. it needs to it needs to be, you know, out. Out. Yeah, for sure. Um, man, messed up my segue, man. My bad. Um, man. I'm sorry. As men, are, are we irresponsible with our dicks? Uh, Fuck yeah. yeah. Terrible. Uh, yeah. <laughs> even in even in the homosexual community, uh, are we irresponsible yeah. with them? <laughs> He said, "Are we well, irresponsible?" Okay, so, Damn. but here's, but this is a topic as well. Like <laughs> we had talked about at the last podcast, because he, me and Ty, yeah, we're the same, but the lifestyle me and him live are a little different. Mm-hmm. Um, because, like I said, I attract people. To be honest, that are like Mitch. You would never guess mm-hmm. uh, the the thugs, little drug dealers, whatever. Ah. So it's a different. It's just a different. <laughs> it, those are the ones that make you so angry yeah. when you find out they download. It's like. What? Yeah, yeah. That's tricky, man. You it know, is. Man. Hey, just I, like how you said the whole inbox thing. Wow. Inbox you know, I had asked him, I had <laughs> asked him for a transgender, should it be mandatory for a transgender to tell you that they're a man, right? right. I mean, but should it be mandatory? mandatory should it be mandatory for a situation? We agree. We agree that we, yeah, yes. That they should. Because but should it be mandatory for a man who's really on the down low? You know what I mean? The, but my thing you is, on the down low, brother, you need to go ahead and say. You know? Man, that's fact. Yeah, man, yeah. brother didn't say that, man. He wouldn't hey, say I done, I done called right. out a brother before, man, for real, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, I done had to, yo, I pull up, you know what I mean? I'm, mm-hmm. I see all of my homies rocking with this dude who I know. Like, hey, man, y'all know, y'all know. I just want y'all mm-hmm. to know. Mm-hmm. I think it's right. Now, I'm not going to be just dry running around talking about this man mm-hmm. undercover or whatever. But you know what I mean? I think, you, hey, bro, if, if you in my circle mm-hmm. around some brothers that I know, it's straight. But turns out, man. Ain't no telling, man. He, ain't no telling. Man, they know who I am. What? <laughs> Wait a minute. They don't yeah, know. Yeah. I, I, say the circle. I, I, don't, I don't know. You're making it sound like it's wrong to have homosexual friends. What are you saying? Yikes. Nah. Nah, 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 man. Okay, look. Let me see. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I'm not tripping. I'm not tripping. I'm just curious to, just to hear your opinion on it. No, I promise well, I'm not tripping. Well, look at you, man. I <laughs> know I'm being messy. Yeah. I want to hear it, though. Nah, man, look, you know, I love, I love real people. Mm-hmm. real people and if you real about who you is i respect that right now dig this you know um a lot of people have uh because i express who i am i express what i believe a lot of people have labeled me as homophobic mm-hmm. for real mm-hmm. and i don't believe that about myself right because i don't agree with what you agree with i gotta get bashed for it so here's my views man and, and, and it's real simple especially from a christian worldview and a christian perspective though here's my views i do not agree with homosexuality Mm-hmm. I do not for various reasons. Mm-hmm. I, I've been in, you know, so many uh, training uh, seminars. I've talked to so many homosexual people. I mean, go so on and so forth, man. And and I mean, just from, a, um, you know, a, 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 not just a spiritual aspect, but just a, a natural aspect. I've done a lot of research into homosexuality, why they pulled it out of the books in 73, who pulled it out of the uh, the medical books as a, a mental disorder in 73 and why they did it. You know what I mean? Um, Planned Parenthood and some other people. But I mean, it's, I've done so much research, you know, into it. And, um, you know, I do not agree. I do not agree with homosexuality. However, With that being said, um, I feel like the Christian community, man, has done a lot of damage to the homosexual and LGBTQ community, man, with um, not really showing them the love of Christ that they should. Because, man, let me tell you, I I believe that we owe the homosexual community love, respect, dignity, and even acceptance, you know? And if you really got the faith in God and in Christ, like you say that you have, then you got to believe that anything about this person that needs to change... God is faithful to do it. And will change. See, I believe what I believe, but I'm not out here, you know, you know, at the homosexual rally. It's like, you need to change. Man, you about to die and go to hell. God created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Nah, that's not my get down. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't, I believe if you really want to see a conversion and you really want to see, you know, the, the power of God operated, operate in their life. And, and, and change them in whatever way that they need to be changed and that ain't gonna work mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying and you can't do it you can't change this person 
But if you believe that God can do it, man, then you just owe them love. You got to show them the love of Christ and how you treat them. And that's how, and that's my goal, man. My goal is to love. Bro, when I walked in, I was like, this, this brother, this mm -hmm. brother, Bob. <laughs> 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 <This is> me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, wait a minute. Now, shh, what? Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, nah, man, though, no, listen, no, you got to know I love you. You know what I mean? I'm oh, yeah, I, I respect you. that. Yeah. I respect you as a brother for real. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But, you know. All them people who feel like I'm homophobe, man, just because I express my my truth, my beliefs, you know what I mean, my, to my core, they're wrong about me, man. Mm -hmm. I got so much love for all of Ooh, the fact you believe. talking here is proof. Yeah, yeah. It's proof. Like, it's, you, I was right yeah. about to say that. That's proof. That. Um, <laughs> I got I got one for y'all. Um, <laughs> y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready for me? Okay. Wait, I got. One. Have y'all have? Oh, no, 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 let me tell my first. Hold on, let me tell my first. Have y'all ever had a? Uh, Y'all gotta tell the story if this happened to y'all. A scenario where <laughs> y'all had to hide from the parents. Y'all was so y'all was, you know, you know who was young. You go over to girl's house and go goose on y'all. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Oh, my mama home and you gotta hide. Wow. Have you have y'all had that scenario? <laughs> you have, you, have you had that scenario? I wanna hear yours. Yoshi, come on, tell it. I wanna hear it. I wanna tell mine. So mine's vicious, though. Yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, um, all right. So I had a situation. Um, does it matter like what age? No, no, I just want to hear the story. Okay. All right. How'd you get away? Oh, <laughs> my, God. oh my God, my mom was gonna kill me. <laughs> so um, well nothing nothing um happened, but um I something told me I just knew because right after he left, she pulled up. Wow. I would have died i would have i would have died if she just saw this man leave her back porch but um i um it was a i guess a neighborhood friend whatever um it was their dad what oh. Whoa. Oh. How, how old were you um, i was 22. Okay. wow um, <laughs> that's how did you get rid of him like okay, so your, your intuition went off your spices so went off you he, were like mom's coming so we were just chill on the back porch, whatever, in Oak Park. And it was a nice area. My mom had a bomb ass apartment, but like we were just talking, whatever. And he kept trying to come in, but something was just like, no, like this is not a good idea. And he kept pressing the issue, pressing the issue. And at one point I was like, all right, so good talking to you, but you gotta bounce. Cause I don't need no bullshit to go on here. He's like, all right, all right, all right. I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave. And literally as soon as he pulled off and Banked the corner. My mom's garage door was opening. <laughs> wow. She came around. This I was... literally was about to shit myself. It was so <laughs> bad. And it, I never, like my mom, like I love her. I know everybody has those stories. Like, oh, I was thinking in my parents' house. Mm -hmm. My mom, you just do not, you just don't do it. Like my kind of. So if she would have did to you, she would have caught you. I probably would be headless. <laughs> <laughs> I would One of probably, type of mamas. I would probably be handicapped. I'd probably have a nice little wheelchair, blinged out, wow. whatever. Yeah. I That's my crazy. mom, my mom has always mom been a fighter. It was, my mom's always been a fighter. You know, Jamaicans, it's zero to hundred. There is no in between. Man. There is no you you break a rule, <laughs> it's it's straight hands on. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, and I feel like she kind of knew because my face was flushed when she walked up the stairs. Like, what's wrong with you? Nothing. <laughs> you know, not, nothing. But yeah, like yeah, I, that situation was traumatic enough for me to never let that happen again. Never. Yes. Even I'm about to be 32. Never man, again. Man, where you get these questions from, man? That's a crazy question. I just, I just, I just come now, up with that. Well, you know, listen, I got that from somewhere. I don't know where that, Now, I, I have popped out of a window. Yeah. Uh, you you tell that You will tell that shit of what? A third floor. A third <laughs> no, you listen, did No, I, I put that on everything. He's not hurt. Third floor. He listen. Listen. That was that situation. Respect. I was at that D.O. man's house, and his girlfriend came home. And I was like, give me some money or I'm going to scream. Word. Yeah, that happened. And you gave the cash, you have the window, you was gone. Yeah, got my little 500. Wow. Dang. Yeah. And that was in Texas. I thought, see, I don't even need to talk. I should have told my story first. Yeah, no, you got to top it. Yes, you should have. Look at I can't top it. But now, look, I just remember a situation, man. I was in high school, man. You know, I'm a high school football player. I'm doing mm -hmm. my thing, man. My little girlfriend at the time, you know, I should say her name. Blank. Yeah. <laughs> 
but she gonna remember this if she if she tuned in. Mm-hmm. Anyways though, so you know, played a football game and hurt my ankle that game, right? So you know, she like come to my house. You know, I'm gonna nurse that ankle for you. Get your ankle oh, right. Okay. You know, something like that, right? Yeah, no doubt. And I'm really hurt though. Literally after the game, you know, my house was probably like you know two three blocks away from her house though. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I limp over there. You know, I got this big bomber, little cowboys bomber on, right? Mm-hmm. So I limp over there. She uh, she take me into the back of the room. Her dad's room is down the hallway. She stayed with her dad. Her and her dad. Ooh. Her dad room is down the hallway. Oh, you was brave for that already. Man, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, hey, so I wanted to get my my ankle nursed. You know what I mean? <laughs> I needed some therapy. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, though, so so I um, you know, I creep in the room. I'm trying to be quiet, but I'm now I'm so quiet. I hear my bomber jacket like psh, <laughs> my jacket is just making so much noise. So we go in a room. Man, so pops you know, is home the whole time. Pops is home. He in there sleep though. He in there sleep. Right. Okay. So I, uh, you know, I slide, I slide the jacket off though. You know what I mean? Cause it's making so much noise. You know, but I have my little condoms. Yeah. In my pocket, uh-huh. You know what I mean? So I slide the jacket off. You know, I lay it on the floor. You know, and we kind of like kissing and grinding, and it's you know what I mean, kind of getting hot and everything. But I'm like, man, now nah, you finna make too much noise. I'm like. Let's go outside. <laughs> right? Uh-huh. So she like, all right, boom. So we finna go outside. We go outside, you know, she closed the door and everything, boom, lights all off, whatever. So, you know, we we grind and everything, and like, you know, one thing leads to another. And it's it's time, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I left the condoms, condoms. You left the condoms in, in the house, in the jacket. And I looked up and I said, hey. Did you leave your, your room light Ooh. on? Oh, <laughs> my God. That? By the okay. time I said that, the door was opening. <clears throat> Man, I took off. I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gone. Full speed, man. I didn't even know my ex. Man, I didn't feel that. <laughs> <laughs> she called me the next day like, hey, my dad want to meet you. Oh, You want to talk to you. I'm like, huh? Lord. I'm like, nah, I'm cool. She like, you have to. If we don't have anything, if we even talk, you need to come meet my dad. Oh, Lord. Man, it was rough, man. I went over there, you know what I'm saying? She opened up the door for me. Dad, this is Mitch. Mitch. He like, going in the back, I need to speak to Mitch. Ooh. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Look, bro. So was you nervous? Was you scared at that I, point? Man, look, it's, it's, it's ninja swords all over the house. No. You know what I mean? Yeah, pictures from him. He like a black belt or something like oh. that. Man, and oh. he want to take me so outside. You think he set this up? No. Like, man, it's, it, he want to take me outside, too, to go talk to me. No. So I'm like, damn, all right, what's up? So he took me to the back. Do you look the way you do now? Back then? I mean, yeah, you know, I was high okay. school football doing my okay. thing, but you know, that this is a grown up, man. Mm-hmm. You know, so, you know, I, anyways, he takes me to the back, man. You know, turns out he was a real cool dude, man. He like, look, man, you know, you running and everything like that. I just want to, you know, how are you going to be able to protect my daughter? If, 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 if the stuff hit the fan, I know you're going to be, I'm like, oh, man, I ain't that type of dude, man. You know what I'm saying? It ain't, it ain't going to happen like that. I was like, I just didn't want. Her to get in trouble with, you uh-huh. know what I mean? But not yes, yeah, yeah, pops. Was so you think he found the condoms in the jacket? You left the jacket up <laughs> no, there, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, but she gave me the jacket later. The condoms were still uh, tight. Mm-hmm. So that's why you survived. <laughs> I survived. That's oh, why okay. You survived. <laughs> yeah. them condoms the jacket. He probably would have used the swords on me, man. Man, right. pull it out. Right. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. 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 All right, guys. <clears throat> Last question. What are some things as men that y'all think that we need to change? Not, not everybody at once. Not everybody. At once. <laughs> man, I think that we need to really step up and be men. You know, um, and when I say that, man, yes, I please explain that, what that means. Yeah, we need to step up, man, and just in so many roles, man. There, there's a lot of us, man, who are guiding these young men in the wrong way. You know, we guiding them when we know certain things about our lives are not right, but we're not trying to break that habit. You know, I think we need to reach back to these younger men and, and continue to let them know, look, man, that's the way that I was living. That's the way that I thought, but that's not right. Mm-hmm. That wasn't right, man. That, that that didn't produce anything good for me, man. Look, a lot of our young men out there, you know, they they robbing houses. They, um, you know, they, they selling dope. They, you know, just living real promiscuous lifestyles and they have no real understanding 
because nobody ain't reached back and talked to him. And that's my mission now. Whenever I talk to young men, come here, let me highlight you real quick. You know, my goal is to try to enlighten them. You know, now whether it helps them or not, you know what I mean? I know that they have that knowledge. I know that it's going to pierce them and affect them. And I think that we as men, you know what I mean, need to constantly be trying to, you know, add value to ourselves and then be willing to pour that out to the next generation and stop lying to them. Also, lastly, um, we just need to start, you know, being real in our communities, man. Like, you know, all of these rappers, man, and they, they like, you know, I think it was, um, it was Future who, who, who was doing it. You know, Future talking about all this popping mollies. He done built his career on these little drugs, popping mollies and this, that, and the other. And I promise you, bro, our kids believe it. They believe that popping mollies and smoking weed and doing all these different things is what it is. And the females are attracted to that. And, you know what I mean? Literally, you know, they talk to a female, what you doing? Oh, I'm about to pop a molly. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, it's cool. <laughs> right. But they don't know that Future done already went to counseling, rehab, and he ain't doing no drugs no more. And Future ain't willing to be transparent because it's a monetary thing on the line. I like tell these kids, you know, I may have had it wrong. Even if that's what he was doing, he ain't willing to be transparent and say, yeah, I had it wrong. Popping mollies ain't what it is. Doing zannies ain't what it is. Bars ain't what it is. Because he's screwing up all of our kids. And in some cases, man, our kids, they don't want to listen to us. They want to listen to the future. They do. They want to listen to them. And I was that child. And yeah. I can honestly say I've tried Xanax. I've tried cocaine. I've tried lean. And none of that shit is, is fun. Mm -hmm. Especially when you're coming down from it. You're, you're dying. Yeah, they say it make you last longer <laughs> in sex. What? They say it make you last longer in sex. No, no, <laughs> you'll pass the hell out. I'll have, a, I'll have a heart attack, but oh, no, but like it, that's crazy. But just to piggyback off what he's saying, like build your community up, you're living in it. Mm -hmm. So, why is it that I'm living here, but I can't talk to my neighbor? Mm -hmm. yeah. We can't discuss yeah. what's going on in my neighborhood, we can't talk about how we're gonna build it up, how we're gonna break the cycle so our kids can be raised in a safe area because kids getting shot up too. Oh, I can't get to you, I'm going to your daycare center and get your kid. Wow. That's heavy, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, you know it's what I'm heavy, saying? Like, man. mental health needs to be discussed. Mm -hmm. A lot of the communities need to get together, and y'all need to have men rallies. Talk about, all right, so since we're the men of the household, what are we doing to, you know, represent our community? What are we doing to make an impact so our kids can, you know, be raised differently from how we were raised? Let's try to correct the mistakes. Can you give me an example of something that we can do as men? Y'all need to come together and do what? Lord, like, I'm not included. Like, host meetings. Like, let's do more like block parties, how we used to have back in the day. Like, everything is so uptight nowadays. Like, we need to break that cycle. We need to uplift each other and just we help our fellow man. Like, we're in the same area. So we need to have group meetings and talk about, yo, this is what our neighborhood needs type thing. Or you said that like y'all don't have y'all don't have issues in our neighborhood. Ooh, well, yeah. I got an idea. I got an idea. Yeah. I think I think I think Yoshi need to just make a list and all these little undercover niggas just uh, you know, Yoshi, that's what I said. put them out there. Yoshi, Yoshi, out there. Yoshi, Yoshi please, please put them out there. They, 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 they listen, don't like that. Listen, you know what I'm, I'm gonna saying? be 100 that's with terrible. you. I'm gonna keep it 100. Like my life will be on the line. Yeah, it would, it would go. It I would believe go. it. No, but, I believe it. But, but, I believe but, it. Because that piggyback on what we talked about. I believe Male it. Male pride is everything. Your life would be on the line. Facts. Because nigga would rather die. What was he was like, I will find you. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. Wow. Where he was, they took his daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, I will take it. I have a set of skills. It will be taken. Yeah, no. He will find, man. That's crazy, though. But no, it's real, though, man. Well, you know, um, similarly, like, how do we, like, because here's the thing, though. Some of these undercover brothers, especially ones that look like me, you know, they look stiff, they look solid, they look like they would, you know, never mm -hmm. even entertain messing with a boy, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but there's some homosexual uh, uh, men out there that be really t trying it, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, they be kind of like, you know, on the, you know, yeah, right. you know what I'm saying? You know, you know what I'm saying? No. Get in your inbox, I, like, yes. not, man. And so is there such thing as curiosity? You need to make sure, for sure. Yes. There, there are people. Yeah, of course. And you know you got, but you also got to come in with that respect. Because right. honestly, did you feel like I was picking up on you or hitting on you when you walked in here? Never. Exactly. And that's a blessing. Of course. Yeah. But my thing is, it does happen. It that's happens, not, it, though. That's something that we talk Man, about. So I, that's I, why I, when people come up, like this situation, like if I would see them in the streets, of course you'd be like, here we go. Mm -hmm. uh, here come another one. Mm -hmm. But it's like that all the time. But also, like what you just asked me, there is curiosity. And a lot of times, that's another thing in our community that's hard to deal with because a lot of niggas will shut that shit out. And that's where homophobia comes along mm -hmm. because they're curious about it and they turn it into hate. 
and they don't want people to even think that they even thought about it. But it's easily acceptable in the women community because, oh, because that's girl on girl. I'm already attracted to it, so I can watch. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But because you can't mentally understand it, it's automatically, no, that's not right. I hate it. You can die. Like, that's petty. Why is, why, are y'all straight men? Yeah. Why is that more acceptable than two men? I mean, the thing is that, you know, I'm, I'm attracted to women. I love looking at women. Now, here's the thing. Is it right? In my opinion? Nah, I don't agree with it. I can't, you know what I'm saying, validate that because it's two women. I know it's definitely a double standard in that regard. It but the, but it, it's similarly, though, it's the same reason why I can't walk into a locker room and my, my man's butt is hanging out and I say, hey, good job. Boy, you getting thick, boy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't rub on my man's chest and like, boy, you been working out, <laughs> right? But, but let a, females do that to each other all, all the time, time. though. Girl, right. look at you. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Smacking on the bus. That's where I, that, that right there is where I came up with that question of if your friend had titties, is it gay? You even want to see your friend's titties? No. That's where I got that from. Cause I see females grab like they all the time. All girl, the time. let me, girl, yeah. let me see that. Yeah. Let two dudes do that though. But does that come from that perception? So we feel like we can't do that. That's where that pride and masculinity. Nah, thing you man, in. that that is kind of. You like, know what I'm saying? You feel like if, no, if anyone because, about that's gay. <laughs> because you know how like you go to a, you walk into a mall, you and your girl walking around, mm -hmm. and another badass chick walks by mm -hmm. and she checks him out. That's Niggas it. do the same shit all the time. They don't want to admit it. The they don't want to admit. Like, what do you mean? We check out the guy and we're like, he's I a good do. looking guy. Hey, I ain't gonna front. If a, if a small Thank you. dude yeah. walks by me, yeah. I'm like, hey, that nigga. Girls, girls, girls check out. I'm like, dude, it's on it. But, but ain't no me, dude gonna admit no shit like but that. Me, but, I'll admit it. but for me, I'll admit it. But for me, it ain't no like sexual attraction. I'd be like, hey, that nigga, like our dude swaggy. He got a cold little fit mm -hmm. on. Like, could you could you tell? But even that. Look, how do you tell a man that he looks good today? Like, he's he's. He looks good today. How do well, you, you know what? I think that for me, though, you know, it's a fine line to walk. Uh -huh. Now, see, if it's somebody that I know. No, you know him. How do you tell your friend? Oh, I'm going to tell him, boy, I see you, boy. Yeah, you're look, fresh. Fresh. I'm doing it, yeah. look good. Is, but the yeah. thing is, you know you're, but yeah, my yeah, thing yeah, is, when yeah. you're confident in yourself and you're yeah. very secure with yourself, yeah. you can walk that line. Right. Because anybody mm -hmm. going to knock you off it. But you see how you said, I see you. You don't sit there and tell him, you look fine. Like, no, no. <laughs> no, <laughs> no <you're not. laughs> Man, look, I, I, I be in the gym all the time. Interestingly enough, man, steroids is a real thing, it though, is. man. I boy, these dudes out there, man. But the thing is, though, you know what I'm saying? January, they be like Arnold Schwarzenegger, and then you know what I'm saying? By February, you know, they just back down. I don't even want to, oh man, you know what I mean? But <laughs> so in the gym, though, I walk around, man. I'm, I'm hey, boy, I boy, you done got big, man. You cutting right now, you chiseling, you know, it's just mm -hmm. like gym talk or whatever. Yeah, but yeah. like, there's no kind of like, but I feel like mm -hmm. sitting there saying that, all right, I see you, that's tiptoeing around saying hey I you look good it's that's not exactly tiptoeing saying. like if it's a genuine compliment yeah. it's a genuine compliment yeah, okay. yeah it's, i think that's saying it I'll tell, See, I mean, you're, I now you're crossing brother. over to the world that i live in that's what i'm saying that'd be, that'd, that'd be some underlying shit, shit. going on mm -hmm. but no but with mitch is straight genuine yeah. like that's it okay Real talk. so hey do y'all think that as men would be more honest with women if they were to show more understanding per se say in the conversation like Say you cheated, but if, I don't know. But if she had more understanding and have that dialogue with you, and don't make you feel some type of way. Like for instance, yeah, yeah. For instance, like not you know, many. Yeah, well, cause you know, for instance, like you know, my wife just asked me, you know, uh, how do you uh, deal with the temptations of other women and all that stuff? You know what I'm saying? It's all about. I mean, she could have. She could have been. Uh, she could have been. She could have said that a different way and, and it could have made me like timid about it. Like, now I'm gonna lie to you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah. because of the way you came at me, now I can be honest and be like, yeah, baby, I'm gonna try to convince you. And you know what I mean? And all that, you know what I mean? But that's what I'm saying. It's all about we, we, we could we be more honest with our women if they were, you know, I, is, is it more understanding or is it they just make us feel more comfortable? That's what they make us feel more comfortable to come out and say these type of things. Do you think they would get more out of us? With that honey, <laughs> rather than I, you know, I feel like if the relationship is secure, you should be able to have these conversations. But why can't these women have these? Why can't these women be comfortable and have? Because these relationships are so easily broken nowadays. No, like the commitment, I feel like is not as solid as as it used to be. Oh yeah, that's absolutely right. I absolutely agree with that, man. Mm -hmm. Relationship, man. When I for I be talking to people, they be like, man, I just broke up with my girl. 
Like, how long was y'all together? Six months. I'd be like, dang, that was a long time. Mm -hmm. These days, a six-month relationship seemed like a long time now. Mm -hmm. But, um, man, listen, man, a lot of women probably finna be pissed off at me, but I'm finna say this, but it ain't my words. I was talking to a pastor one time. You know, I was dating a young lady or whatever, mm -hmm. and he said, uh, he said, hey, yo, Mitch, you gonna marry that young lady? And I said, nah, man, she crazy. He looked me dead in my eyes. He said, all of them are crazy. <laughs> That's what the pastor you told me, one. man. You pick and one. I believe it, though. You know what I'm saying? So when you talk about a woman being understanding, I guess it definitely depends on that. Oh, cheating? How she going to be understanding? I mean. OK, yeah. I, mean, I think I went too far with cheating. But, but I just but, mean, you just, know you, mean? Know, you know, if you look at, like, I keep saying how, how men will look at that woman right. when she passed by because she's fine. Should your woman be upset that you were looking at this other woman? You well, know what I mean? Some, no, no, because you, some relationships, some relationships, they do it neck. together. But, but, right. But, See, that but, shows but, understanding. But that, but, I got a question for you. Mm -hmm. Real talk. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ask yourself this. You and your woman walking together, you know, y'all chilling or whatever. You know, she kind of like fall back to tire shoe. You know, you got the kid, you walking or whatever. And you look back. And when you look back, she like stuck on this dude. Like, damn, right dude is just everything. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. how you going to feel? Look like Mitch. Her? Why you over there looking at right. Mitch? What you doing? <laughs> Nah, but how you gonna feel though? Keep it real, cause that's the situation. I am before. not gonna be jealous. Really? No. That's impressive, man. I'm not. I, I was absolutely jealous. Hey, I was. I wanna look at what she's looking at. I'm, I'm, looking, I'm trying to follow her eyes and see what she's looking at. I found so then it. when she come over, I'm be like, man, he looked. He looked okay, or you know, what I, mean? I can give my opinion. I don't. That's just me. Like, that's what I want her to do for me. But what if he I'm was a, like everything you wasn't though? He like. Six five, super swole, Mitch, super. Look, look, bro. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. Look. Before you really ain't gonna, because I think that's impressive though. If you can be that secure, you know what I mean, and not insecure in that way. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't think I've arrived yet. I, I wonder like, what, what would I do. What would I do? But, you know, but that you, happens. If you that happens. Happens. What would I do in that scenario? <laughs> I wonder. But how would you feel? You were really not. You wouldn't feel. She on him like. Damn. She looking. She looking, y'all talking about she looking. She looking hard, but she looking. I, and I can't, to me, I can't fault her because I know that I've done that. But like, when you look, do you be trying to make eye contact though? Do you huh? be trying to make eye contact though? Like, damn, I see you. Do you want her to know you see her? Or you just no, 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 that. <laughs> now that. Now that. What are you saying? Making that eye, uh -oh. making that that, eye contact? That right there. That will that will get the hands put on you real quick. No, 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 no. no, no. no you know what? I, honestly, I can't really say that. I'll be pissed mm -hmm. because now you're trying to initiate something. Ooh. So you're saying that's being now that's disrespectful. It's one thing, like, it's one thing point, to check somebody out and be like, oh, okay, you know, that's what's up. But then when you're purposely trying to get that eye contact, man, that first contact, that's when it goes from there. Yeah. Now you now you're purposely trying to go to certain stores mm -hmm. and move real different. Hey, look at that register real quick. Hey. Ah. Like, <laughs> no, like it it leads hey, to other things. Girls be cold Ooh. like that though. This, I ain't that smooth. <laughs> yeah, me not. Ain't that smooth. Did she flirt with another man with me standing next to her? Yes. Mm -hmm. Shoot. Man, what's going on, brother? Where you been? Man, I need, I need, I need to talk to you, man. Um, Damn, that's good. Because she flirt with the man next to me. That's disrespect. What you mean? Can you flirt with another man while you say? What well, you it, depends, it depends on what, what lifestyle are we in. Are we in the swinging lifestyle? Is it, is it to the point uh, to where, is, 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 is it to the point to where no, I like we're talking, yo baby you wanna no we're so talking we're in real time right now no no that's just, no, that's just, that's disrespectful you're like no nah man oh, but okay. you know it's crazy though because we get a lot of validation from certain type of thing when but I walk by is, and I see a female kind of looking and I'm looking and she kind of like okay a little but, smile I'm like mm -hmm. damn okay but wait, check this out. <laughs> I've seen my woman flirt with the flirt with the man to to get something that maybe we need maybe we can get a wow. discount on the check maybe we can and I, okay, can't, and I ain't well, mad at that that's you know something what I'm that needs yeah. to be relayed yeah. between y'all too and that piggybacks against no you know, she may not have told me that's what she was doing but I understood you no know? doubt you know what I'm saying I know no, she's I trying see, to get that I discount that but there has to but be communication woman, at some point yeah, no, there has to sure. be communication. At Absolutely, point. it got to. Because if I'm standing at the register, this is a female, and she's gonna give me that cold or discount, my chick, she's gonna fall off. Fall back. She right. We didn't already had that type of communication. Exactly. Like, Let me get this she on yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh uh. Oh, what she said. Oh, what am I lying about? Wait, wait, hold on. <laughs> Mm -mm. What the flirting part are about? What, what part were I lying about? Mm -mm. Okay. Okay. 
Anything else, guys, that you think that we missed that we need to talk about as far as, you know, the manhood and manly discussions? Um, I just, I'm grateful to be in a situation and being able to, man, to speak us, out. It was a great perspective on no, some Because, girls, no, again. And it's crazy as straight men. You wouldn't think so. Like, I, I, I'm telling you my first, because London and my sister convinced me to, you know what I'm saying, to even have you on this. I'm like, in my head, I thought that I would be mis, uh, misleading the, the young man that would be watching it. That's what I felt in my head. Like, I would be misleading this young man by having a homosexual on the, on the podcast because he's not a man. You know what I'm saying? That's what I was thinking. Oh. Give, give, me, give me Yoshi. I'm saying. Oh. But that's what I was thinking. And they, they mm-hmm. had to talk to me and they had to let me know, like, you heard you. Let me tell you what this man said. It was so cold. He said these knuckles, these these hands might have sugar. <laughs> hey, he said these hands might have sugar on them, but they run on diesel. Ooh, I said, oh, if that wasn't the most manly shit I've heard, <laughs> I said, damn. I believe it. I but, believe it. I, I, Yoshi, I, you ever you ever intimidated? So, oh, you gonna holler at me? <laughs> <laughs> you first, of all, first of all, people that happens to them all the time. They see my pictures, they think I'm small, but then even they're like, I swear, oh, when I walk shit. into this room. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I, I do, but I'm not, I'm not aggressive when it comes to like that stuff because mm-hmm. I'm already in a dangerous lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Like the people that I attract, it's dangerous. Like, so you like the dangerous lifestyle? No, I want to put that out there. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't flock to that. I'm not trying to promote that because that's not healthy. Because I could be walking into a relationship and be happy, and this man could be married with seven kids. Ooh. I won't know. Yeah. But that's but that's just the dangers that we have. But I don't ever put myself out there like you gonna talk to me. Like that's just not the person that I am. My personality, like everybody likes my personality. Mm-hmm. I will give it that. Like I re- I really pretty much like I get along with everybody. I respect everyone. So I'm gonna keep it that way. But no, and by no means will I force myself on anybody. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> you a lot, London. You can be flirt for a discount. What happened? She said, she said, my wife was telling me that uh, she couldn't flirt for a discount in front of me. Yes, I oh, yeah. oh. London, you better stop playing. So, um, at this point in your life, are you just like, look, this is me, this is who I am? Mm-hmm. Is it like no turning back? Because I'm, I'm looking at you, I'm like, damn, well, I know some females would be on you. You look here's... like a, a handsome brother, though. Mm-hmm. But I still pull females every day. I can imagine. Yeah. Can imagine. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, man, we lost one. <laughs> no, no. So will you ever come back? But he said he was a career. This is this is this his is life. this is life. me. Because at the end of that, ever, but huh? for but for me being me, I'm still pulling them females that you think I could. I should so you, still pull. So you so you like females then? Females are great. I I I am sexually attracted to them and all that good stuff. But it's okay. not the lifestyle that I choose to go towards because it's not so natural to me. It is right. That's it so is. interesting. I should have had you for that episode, man. Yeah, that's cool. Man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you like? How would you define? You know, what I mean yourself like you would just say you gay okay yeah. but you, but the fact that you like females though okay what does let's, that let's, mean let's say but this you don't prefer but that's what it is for a man to say they're bisexual what nigga say are oh, you gay that's true yep. it's true if you didn't yeah you gay yeah oh, yes. but that's coming back from there that there is redemption from that man i know somebody who lived this it's life called deliverance there but it, it starts is. it starts in the mind yeah i agree with that nigga. it's 35 in the years mind. this man lived as a woman and now this man got a family, he got kids, and it's he is like, it's not a game, though. See, because I think that there's some dudes out there, like especially them undercover brothers that's got wives and girlfriends, but secretly laying in the bed, imagining they would have do. That's a, you know a, what I'm saying? That's, that's a, terrible. It's a dangerous fantasy. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like, nah, some people really do like, like you said, they get that deliverance, man. They're like, damn, you know, I realized the trauma. You know what I mean? I was molested when I was five years mm-hmm. old, and I thought that this is what it was, and I thought that I couldn't regain my manhood or whatever the case was. And they, and they finally get that freedom and that redemption and that healing that they needed, and they like living happy lives. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and that's not to say like I'm I'm living like <laughs> I'm living I'm I'm horrible. Like I'm very blessed, and I'm yeah. odd to get the opportunities that I have right now. And me being me has got me where I am, and I met great people along the way. I've learned a lot, so it's like not to say that it's bad. Like I, we're all on the same path mm-hmm. to go up. My path may be a little different, mm-hmm. but I'm still I'm still in the same. I'm in, I'm in a walk like everybody else. Mm-hmm. We all have our journey we got to take. So I 
me personally, I don't know what lies ahead for me. I don't want to say like, oh, I'm going to be delivered. I mean, I don't know. I just have to be me <laughs> and just, and just, and so just keep doing what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I yeah. can never say like, oh, that's the goal and this and that. Because I know people who have died a homosexual. I know people who have been a homosexual and chose to walk a different path. But who's to say they still don't battle those demons every day? Yeah, you're right. You might, I, might, right. I might turn around and have a wife and kids, but who's to say I'm really happy? I'm just doing it to yeah. please y'all and do the textbook lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. So, yeah, that's a lot with that, but <laughs> tune in next week. Right. Some <laughs> <That's laughs> <the> world turns. <laughs> yeah. All yeah. right, guys, so again, nothing else that y'all want to speak on yeah. that we missed. Mm-hmm. Oh, we get that? We in mm-hmm. there? Pleasure being here, though. Yeah, man. man. Did you guys have fun? Great. Did I mean, you have fun? Yoshi, man. Real talk, man. I was amazing. You. I, I, I'm that. so grateful that I did, you know, decide to come on. Yeah, he called me like, "Hey, Mitch, look, I had I to, was, I had to, I had to, I want to hear this that. conversation. How that go? It was light, though, like, yeah. you know what I mean? He's like, look, Mitch, I, just, you know, want to know if you okay with that? We're gonna have a homosexual on the show. I said, look, man, I'm not gonna not be who I am. I'm gonna say exactly how I feel. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He's like, okay, Mitch, but I just need you to say it in the right way. Well, yeah, I, I, please articulate your words. Mitch, I walked in here. I was like. Oh, yeah, I better say this. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I say this in the right way? <laughs> no, like one th- one thing about me, one thing about me, if we if we ever have a conversation again on the podcast, like I'm not easily offended. You can be mm-hmm. yourself, one hundred percent raw. That's what's I'm up. not set off like that. I'm not about to be like, oh, wait a minute, wait, no, it's that's not me. You know what I'm saying? So like, most definitely, we had this topic. I'm still a nigga first. I'm gay second. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> Yes, yeah. they run on diesel. <laughs> <laughs> boy, for real, that's boy. That's that's that yeah. was so cold. Yeah. All right, y'all. It's radioactive. Peace. Oh, again, you guys check out the Instagram, check out the YouTube, radioactive podcast. One word, radioactive podcast. Like the page on Facebook, y'all. Peace. <laughs>